Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome. Uh, to, I'm going to call this meeting to order at 6 o'clock. This is the regularly scheduled Committee of the Whole meeting for June the 20th. Uh, we have people both uh, here uh, in our antechamber and uh, streaming online, uh, so welcome to all of you. Um, as we gather, we always acknowledge that we are gathering in the traditional territories of the coasts and the Strait Salish peoples, specifically the Lekongan speaking people known today as the Songhees and the Esquimalt nations. And we recognize that the connections to these lands and to the adjoining waters continues to this day. Uh, up first, we just have approval of the agenda, moved and seconded. Uh, we are missing Councillor Zulka, but he is in here. We're just going to go through some of the pro forma stuff. Uh, he just had to step out for a second. Uh, any discussion or corrections on the minutes? Not seeing any, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. And then we have um, uh, adoption of the uh, Committee of the Whole Minutes. Moved and seconded. Do I have a seconder? If moved and seconded, thank you. Uh, any discussion, corrections, or changes to the minutes? Not. Come back in. Come on. <laughs> back in, Councillor Zalka. Uh, did you have any changes or corrections on the minutes? Okay, so I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. Um, our next item on the agenda, item number four, is the Mayor and Council Verbal Reports. Uh, I want to just point out for those, especially those uh, online, uh, if you're interested in um, uh, addressing Council in the next section, Section 5, which is the general public comment section. Uh, this is be comments not related to items on the agenda, but just uh, items of interest to the community. That is the next section. This is the appropriate time to call the 1855 number that's in the agenda package. Hit the uh, meeting ID and passcode, and then hit star 9. It is star 9, not pound 9, star 9 to raise your hand. Uh, and uh, because there's a bit of a lag in the stream, if you're watching the stream, uh, we'll be ready for you at that time. Uh, so that's it. Uh, and I'm just going to go around the, uh, the room here, and just a chance for members of council to update each other as we sit on various committees and, and working groups to update uh, the rest of the members of the, of the, of the council sitting uh, to update that. I also just want to point out, we have a number of people, I think, who aren't regulars here uh, to... Uh, uh, to them, welcome them to the meeting, but also just to let you know, uh, this is a what we call a committee of the whole. So it says council sitting as a committee. So we don't do legislative decisions at this meeting. We are simply uh, it's a, a less formal uh, meeting than we normally have as a council. Allows us to have some some broader discussion. Um, our recommendations here uh, aren't final. They go. We basically make recommendations to ourselves or direction to staff to come back uh, for for uh, confirmation at a, as we said as a council at a future meeting. Um, so that's the context that we're, they're meeting in, and if you're okay, members of council, I'm going to go around the table uh, in any order, doesn't matter. Can I start with you, Councillor Green? Is there any updates that you might have for members of council? Thank you very much. The only update is that um, I'm attending the, as most of us probably are, the ceremony to induct our new uh, Deputy Chief of Police, um, Sergeant Julie Shannon, which is a, a first in the region to have a woman in that position, so that will be a, a very pleasurable thing to attend. Um, I understand there's also an Indigenous um, welcoming and celebration at the Royal Road University tomorrow morning, and some people may try to attend. Um, and thirdly, I, I don't think uh, there are any other meetings that I've attended um, other than the Spring Nosh on Saturday. I was there briefly. Some of you were there a long time, um, but I think it went very well and it was very enjoyable from what I gather. So that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. And that the, the event tomorrow is, uh, for those who don't know, is in recognition of the National Indigenous Peoples Day, which is held on the summer solstice every year. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, thanks so much, and yes, thanks to Councillor Green for talking about the Spring Nosh. It was a wonderful event, and so um, kudos to the to Heather Leary and the BIA. Um, the only update I have is that there is a 24-hour relay happening this um this weekend where we have firefighters from Oak Bay, Saanich, Esquimalt and Victoria, I believe, um, who will be fully equipped with all of their equipment walking around the, the Jack Wallace track um, from noon on the 25th of June to noon on the 26th of June. And they're raising money um, for the Jack Wallace track and field um, re, um, refurbishment. So if anybody is around and wants to go and there'll be music and food and lots of things and lots of opportunities to make a donation. Thank you. 
you, Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'll just very briefly, in my capacity as uh, liaison to the uh, OPE Heritage Foundation, the o some may have noticed that the OPE Foundation is uh, back at the night markets presenting uh, information for the public, um, which they've really been looking forward to. Um, and from what I understand, it's really, really well attended, and uh, they've got new materials available to the public and, and their usual research materials to, to hand out. So they're very pleased to be back there. So I would definitely encourage members of the public to go and visit at the OPE Night Market. It's coming up in another couple of weeks. Um, and then I would just update council in my capacity as Greater Victoria Public Library Board Trustee. The board met for its, what is usually its annual retreat this past weekend on Saturday. Uh, that's the first time, obviously due to COVID, that the board's been able to meet for a retreat since 2019. Um, so it was much anticipated and everybody was very excited to see each other in person. Um, of, of interest on that agenda, uh, was both implementation of the Library Board's strategic bridging plan, so a two-year uh, uh, strategic plan to deal with the outcomes of COVID and, and to adapt the organization into, its, uh, into the future. Um, and then also what may be of interest is the second item that was reviewed was the uh, ongoing process to evaluate the replacement of the GVPL's central branch. So as council may be aware, the city of Victoria is undertaking a feasibility study right now to assess whether or not what the options are available as far as housing a new central branch. Uh, it, uh, for those who aren't aware, that was actually a temporary building 40 years ago. So it's, uh, it's long overdue for replacement or upgrade or something of that nature. So that is um, something that the library board is inputting to directly and, and, and watching with great, great interest. So as in, uh, we're not sure that those things will come forward before the, those that uh, will be delivered before the end of this council term, but uh, council should, uh, should keep an eye on it. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councilor Appleton. I, yeah, I think that moved from the Carnegie location at the corner of Blanchard and Yates to that what was supposed to, yeah, it was supposed to be, I think, a t two or three year temporary location, now 40 years in. Go ahead, Councillor Zalko. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. And yes, we always have to be careful with those temporary measures that sometimes appear rather permanent after a while. Um, as liaison to the Oak Bay Emergency Program, I had the pleasure of attending the volunteer dinner, um, and, um, and it was an absolutely delightful time it was had by all, um, I can report. Um, uh, as liaison to Camosun College, I had the pleasure of attending their, uh, their, their convocation that they had um, over at the Interurban camp Campus. There were three uh, years of cohorts that were all con con um, um, graduating together, and it was uh, absolutely delightful to see the, 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 uh, the, the ceremony they were able to put on. It was, it was quite lovely. Um, and then as, uh, as a water, CRD Water Supply Commissioner, um, there is a new uh, master plan coming forward. And um, it's hard to believe, but we, it looks like we may have to start planning for water filtration uh, in the area. We're, we're blessed with an amazing reservoir, an amazing water supply. Um, but with the, the standards that are changing uh, in the next 20 to 30 years, um, we may have to uh, start uh, filter the water. So we're, we're starting to plan for that um, already. So that's uh, my update. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zelka. Um, I'll go to you next, Councillor Patterson. No report, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, I will just, uh, Councillor Nave, for those who are interested, uh, is under the weather and is not able to join us tonight. Uh, I know that uh, she was, uh, it, it, she helped organize uh, members of council to ride together in the Ride Don't Hide event to raise awareness for mental health a couple weekends ago. So thank you for the councillors who were able to participate in that. Um, and I'm just going to uh, point out a couple, uh, one thing, which is just um, because the system has changed, uh, any applications for homeowner grants or for the uh, any tax deferral program uh, participation has to go through the province. So that's a change in the last two years. Uh, we still have people coming in here last minute to uh, to fill in those forms, and they're not ours to, to hold anymore. They're done through the province. So I just always like to remind people July 4th is the last day for those. And so if you're in intending to participate in either of those, uh, please make sure you get those uh, those applications for those uh, in before that date. All right. Uh, now we do move on to the uh, public comment and question period. So all the items on the agenda tonight do welcome public participation. So this is a separate section, really just if there's things that aren't on the agenda, uh, points of interest that people feel are, uh, have questions or comments for council, this is a chance to do it. Um, we tend to get more of these at the council table than at the uh, committee of the whole, but if anybody wishes to come forward from the public, 
Uh, I already put the call out there. There's no people online, I don't see, who have indicated. Uh, if you are online and wish to, uh, things, if you're in the app, you can, the Zoom app, you can raise your hand using the, uh, the raise hand, or if you're calling in, you can hit the star nine button uh, on your phone to, uh, to raise your hand and I will call on you. I do see a hand raised up here, so I'm going to call on you. Um, and the, um, the process here, if you could just state your name, uh, your municipality of residence, and then you have uh, three minutes to address council. Uh, so what I have is a phone number that ends in 8433. Um, you are unmuted. Uh, just You could just introduce yourself and your municipality of residence and uh, go ahead and address council. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? We can. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Corey Berger, Policy and Infrastructure Chair, Capital Bike. Uh, just calling in about item 7.1. We're uh, excited to see Oak Bay moving us, forward uh, Berger, on the new bike infrastructure again. Mr. Berger. Yes. Uh, sorry, we will take yep. public input on those items as we get to them. This is not the chance to address oh, items okay. on the thing. So we'll, as we get to the items, we'll, we'll deal with them at that time. But uh, this is for things that aren't Perfect. on the agenda tonight. So thank you. And I will talk to you then. Okay, sounds good. Uh, all right, any other uh, hands flagged here for uh, just items of general interest for council? I don't see any, so uh, we will move on. And uh, to item first item on the agenda is item 6.1. We have Mr. Meekle here, who is our uh, Director of Parks, Recreation and Culture. Um, welcome, I think this might be the first time we've had you here in this role. So uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Meekle. And uh, perhaps you can give a, a quick overview, and I note that we do have a a, a, a letter here as well from the Victoria Regional uh, Pickleball Association, so maybe you could address that as well in your in your general comments. Do you have that? I don't have that with me, sorry. Okay, no worries. Why don't yep. you give your introduction and then we'll, we'll get to that. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, through the Chair to committee. So uh, back up a little bit to last spring and uh, was as a result of increased play, outdoor play in pickleball through the pandemic, particularly fall 2020 and in winter 2021. Uh, report was presented to council that uh, ultimately landed in the relocation of our courts at uh, Canavan Park from the location closest to the Allenby residence or Allenby uh, Road residence to the old lacrosse box at Canavan Park. Um, at that time, uh, the relocation really was focused, seemed to be focused on finding some balance between the, the value of providing this outdoor physical social activity, which primarily involved and uh, older adult participants, uh, and the ability of those close neighbours to uh, enjoy the, their own yards in peace. Uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, noise uh, issues surrounding pickleball courts uh, have been well documented in the media. Uh, in the region and, and beyond the region uh, over this last year. So the council decision to move those courts to the old lacrosse box uh, did create a greater distance from the courts to those homes on Allenby Street in particular. Uh, however, there were two homes at the corner of Henderson and Townley, which uh, uh, the distance actually decreased somewhat. So they became, they were closer to uh, the court location. After the relocation, um, Staff undertook uh, measurements, taking measurements of decibel readings, and uh, it should be noted that uh, these are not considered scientific readings by by any measures. It was, um, but we did our best to kind of address some of the challenges that exist in taking noise measurement readings in the outdoor environment, given the changing wind direction, the amount of activity in the park, and uh, other ambient noise that that was there. So, uh, multiple staff did measurements uh, with a handheld decibel reader. And we tested over multiple days, over varying times of day, uh, and test, but we tested at the same uh, 10 locations around the park uh, to, to keep that consistent. So we tested also with players playing and without players playing. Uh, generally, we found, and again, the details of this are in the report, a uh, decreased level of noise at the border to the homes of the Allenby Road um, while there was full pickleball play. And uh, similarly, however, we also found a, a, slighter, uh, a slight decrease in sound to those homes also on Henderson and Townley. Um, so a greater decrease in noise as that distance increased. For the Allenby Road uh, residents, the distance from the courts went from about an, you know, less than 10 metres to just over 50 metres. So it was quite a, quite a distance increase in that relocation. I'll also note, which isn't in the report, that uh, we did measure the sound differences between full pickleball play 
and uh, no play in the park and pickleball play tended to increase noise between about six to 12 decibels uh, with full pickleball play there versus no play. So staff conclusion to increase distance does seem to have helped uh, in, in the noise mitigation as did I think the existing five foot plywood wall that surrounds the lacrosse box. Uh, however, that's not to say that there still aren't concerns and still aren't issues of the neighbors uh, in terms of noise. I'll also note that through this last year, there's been work in other districts to explore options of sound mitigation, which sort of uh, leads to why this return of this report to council. The council had requested some options for uh, noise mitigation at that park, and uh, we wanted to see how things played out in the region over the fall and, and into spring here. Um, however, it's, it's, I think the word is inconclusive in nature in terms of the other research that was conducted. Uh, in the region. So we've heard and seen and read about noise issues surrounding pickleball in uh, Victoria, District of Saanich, North Saanich, Sydney to highlight a few. Uh, we worked most closely with the District of Saanich and they undertook some trials of various materials at Talmy Park. Uh, they did both the what's called a rubberized uh, rolled material um, around that uh, the, they had two courts, two pickleball courts there and they did that rubberized material. Uh, and then they also did a test with um, what's a fiber felt boards in combination with a cement cementitious boards or generally called hardy board hardy plank uh, at Tommy Park uh, and again they did some sound testing with a, a sound engineer there and a, a box created on the other side of the panels um, the, they did find some decrease in the sound level with the cementitious and fiber boards placed there however it was a a small sample it was only a sort of eight feet by nine feet high sample so you could certainly hear noise coming from around those panels um, they did have a another sound in, engineer look to corroborate the findings and those were inconclusive so uh, my understanding at this point Sandwich has not moved forward with uh, noise mitigation they are looking at other locations uh, for pickleball courts into the future uh, however as we're all aware Sandwich has um, more land options than we do here in Oak Bay. Um, also important to note that uh, there are discussions underway of further research so province-wide through Pickleball BC and the BC Recreation of Parks Association uh, they're looking to conduct some research on uh, sound issues surrounding pickleball to create some standards around placement of courts within the district or within a municipality. Uh, and there's also the beginnings of some discussions on a regional level here in Greater Victoria of uh, the development of a strategy for the provision of courts in the region. And uh, Oak Bay, I have certainly been at that table in those early discussions. So um, still looking at uh, options for what we might bring forward in the future there. So in terms of the options that we've uh, investigated over this last year, um, those are provided in the report. A quick overview, there's the rubberized product, often called uh, Acousti Fence or Acousti Block is sort of the brand name. Uh, this is generally seen as the least expensive and easiest to install and we'd be looking to install the sound panels on the existing cage of the lacrosse box, the chain link fence, and we would only go around the edge, the side that faces the homes and leaving the other side open. Um, did have discussions with Oak Bay Police to ensure that that didn't create some uh, possible, um, I guess, higher incidence of crime locations, so to speak, with the consideration for crime prevention through environmental design process. Uh, so this, the rubberized product um, is also seen as probably having the little least noise mitigation impact. Certainly in Tommy Park, the neighbors reported anecdotally very little change in noise impact with the rubberized material there. The fiber felt and cementitious board that I had mentioned um, is a little more experimental. We, we haven't really found a, a model uh, that exists where they've used this outdoors. Uh, it is a product that is used in more indoor industrial settings and they use it to uh, with large machinery and to mitigate sound from that large machinery in, indoors. Um, however, the company is interested in sort of investigating this as a business opportunity certainly. but. Um, so it certainly it could also be attached to the existing chain link fence and um, again may provide some uh, mitigation measures there and then the last one was is found to be the you know most effective in terms of noise mitigation which is your uh, cement pvc metal type fencing that you see on the sides of highways generally i, I know right now you can certainly see some of that around the 
uh, new interchange at Mackenzie and, and Highway 1 there. So, um, but it's, it's very heavy. It could not be attached to the existing structure. It would be a separate fence line, uh, and it, it is quite expensive in comparison to the other ones. So we're seeking, staff are seeking direction as to the options for noise mitigation as provided or direction to continue with the status quo at those courts. Uh, if council chooses one of those noise mitigation options, we're also seeking uh, direction in terms of the funding source. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Meikle. I, I'm going to take questions from, uh, from members of council. Um, I, we do have three members of the public who have uh, come to the chambers to, uh, to comment or ask questions. So we'll get to them next. Uh, and if anybody who is online at this time, either watching the live stream, if you're just watching the live stream and want to call in, the one eight five five numbers in the agenda, hit star nine once you're through that to raise your hand. We'll see you in the meeting. Uh, or if you're in the Zoom app, you can also raise your hand through that app. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite first. Thanks so much, uh, Mayor. And through you to Mr. Miko, congratulations first on your new role. It's We're very lucky and fortunate in the municipality to have you be able to take that role over. And it's really nice to bring someone from within the municipality into that role. So congratulations on that. Um, thank you so much for your report. I did note that we did receive a, a, a letter from the Victoria Regional Pickleball Association. And in that letter, they, they talked about um, they're looking at doing uh, sound engineering testing at Carnarvon and they have asked that we delay any decision that we do until that um, testing has been done and it says that the testing is being funded and supported by um, Pickleball BC in association with BC Parks and Recreation Association. So my question is number one, do we know when that's going to happen and number two, are we involved in that testing? Go ahead, Mr. Meikle. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, yes, we are involved in that, and sorry, my apologies, I did forget to mention that Carnarvon is one of those sites that uh, is on that list. So that's the pro province-wide research I mentioned with Pickleball BC and uh, uh, the uh, BC Recreation Parks Association. Now, um, I have uh, requested that, uh, number one, they're looking really just, as my understanding, to create some standards around placement of courts within districts. Um, I think should council choose uh, sound mitigation, barrier, uh, mitigation measure, uh, that would be an opportunity for that study to take a look at a pre and post kind of situation with, uh, with the, that sound barrier. So uh, I do understand, I believe that the president of the Victoria Regional Pickleball Association is one of the uh, public speakers here tonight and may also be able to answer some of that. Go ahead, Councilor Brithman. And thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, my next question is in regards to the fiber felt um, cementation, um, cementers board, or whatever you called it. Yeah, anyhow, the fiber felt. Um, I, it, it, you said that they had never um, done um, anything like that with a pickleball court, and I'm wondering if we did choose to go that way, whether or not Oak Bay could be perhaps chosen as a, a, a guinea pig, per se, um, for that sort of... Um, for that, uh, that sort of um, item to be used um, in, this, in this case, uh, you know, maybe it, it could be something where we then don't have to pay for it if, the, if we're like their guinea pig or something like that. Is, there, is that something that we have thought about or? Mr. Meikle. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, that is an inquiry we could make. I, I don't think they're in a, my sense was they're not in a position to offer uh, a free trial. Um, we weren't able to find anything local or in that matter in BC that we were aware of, uh, nor was this company. This is a local company in Victoria. Um, I shouldn't say that it doesn't exist elsewhere in North America as this same noise issue is, exists across North America and it, with pickleball. So, Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Green and Councillor Zelka. Yes, thank you. My questions were answered, and, and thank you very much for the report, Mr. Meikle. Um, but my questions were answered. Those were my also my questions. Thank you. Good. Go ahead, Councillor Zalka. Uh, thank you so much, Chair, and thank you uh, through you to um, to our new uh, 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 CEO of Parks, Rec, and Culture C Director. Thank you, Director. I, I'm not quite sure what the title is these days. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, I guess through you, Chair, first question would be through you to staff. With respect to the Parks, Rec, and Culture Committee that is being stood up um, to assist with questions such as this, uh, let me, the first question would be, where are we at the standing up of that committee, and uh, when might it be uh, expected to go live, please? Uh, thank you, Councillor Zelka. 
Ms. Williams, do you have a timeline from trying to rec recall? I think it's the summer that we're trying to do the selection process, but uh, perhaps give us a quick update. Thank you, Your Worship, and yes, through you to Council. Uh, staff will be bringing a report forward on July 11th with some options for appointments to that committee. Thank you. I'm assuming with, with orientation and so forth, that would probably be September, October, be that when those would, that would come in and, and be operational. Thanks. Go ahead, Councilor Zelka. That's very good news. I'm so glad to see that that committee is being stood back up. And, um, and that um, means, I imagine, Parks, Rec, and Culture will have to uh, adjust and make room like the rest of us for you know, interaction with real people, <laughs> which is fantastic. Um, uh, one of the things that I really am hoping is that uh, if there is happens to be a delay to uh, assist with further, further uh, testing, acoustic set testing, that we may have an opportunity to refer this item to the Parks, Rec, and Culture Committee, maybe for their first, uh, first item uh, for, for, for feedback and, and, uh, and possible advice from the public. Um, so that would be uh, something that I would be looking for um, uh, once this uh, committee is stood up. Uh, I also wanted to ask, um, uh, with respect to the Carnarvon Park Master Plan, I hopefully I got the name correct, uh, I know it's basically been on hold, certainly during the pandemic. Uh, we probably have a schedule for when that master plan is due to come forward and for us to maybe start applying some monies to it and possibly even some, whether it's five years or 10 years, uh, do we have any idea when that might happen, please? Thank you, Councillor Zelka. Go ahead, Mr. Meikle. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Zelka. Uh, it has been, the, the plan, of course, has been uh, adopted by Council and uh, the first stage was really to take a look at the building, uh, which is in most need of uh, attention, so to speak. And so the, it is in our capital plan over be sort of Q3, quarter three, four this year to start that process of some consultations on the building uh, at Carnarvon Park. Uh, the relocation of the pickleball courts uh, was seen as a temporary move. I, understand that's a bit ironic in the discussions of temporary that happened earlier um, but uh, it, so that is different than what was in the master plan um, the master plan suggested a less court so that piece that section of the master plan may need to be reviewed uh, into the future but the first stage is to take a look at the building uh, and the building includes also I believe the water park too so uh, that's first step which should be within the next year in terms of consultations Excellent, if I may. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate knowing the timing because, of course, that would affect uh, whether we look at a sort of a temporary solution or, a, or maybe a more permanent solution. And knowing that we already have a, a, essentially an approved master plan in place, ready to go, just waiting for money and uh, a lot of time and attention and available hands, um, uh, certainly could change the dynamic with respect to a question like this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Zelka. I have Councillor Appleton, Patterson, and then back to Councillor Green. Well, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to staff. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm looking to potentially get a bit of a read on um, uh, the, the, the public feedback on the improvements that were made or the, in, in terms of the distancing of the courts. I, I, I'm, I'm conscious that before the courts were moved, um, that there was, we, we did receive quite a lot of correspondence, quite a lot of communication from the public, um, and were updated by staff that they were also being communicated with that this was a, a significant and ongoing issue. Um, and not to say that just because there's an absence of that in this case that that represents a you know a, a, a massive change. But I, I'm I'm not aware, at least in in my capacity of receiving a lot of um, uh, the complaints to the same extent that what we've heard before. In fact, I haven't really heard that much about it at all, and, and I haven't heard from staff as far as identifying an ongoing issue or, a set, or at least that the relocation of the pickleball courts didn't affect a significant change. So I'm just wondering whether staff might just sort of be able to give a flavor for what public feedback or lack thereof that there's been just in terms of complaints about the ongoing noise issue. Thank you, Worship. Mr. Meikle. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to Councillor Appleton. Uh, we certainly have seen a decreased level of complaints uh, since last spring. Uh, so the relocation has had some impact. Uh, that's not to say that we are without complaints. It's, it's not zero. And um, so what we've tended to hear is that the residents along Allenby uh, Road, where the, probably the 
bulk of the majority of complaints came from last spring uh, has decreased uh, those residents again anecdotally and we have our staff have interacted with those residents and we we did inform those residents that this information was uh, coming forward to council tonight uh, there may be some of them here this evening I'm not sure but uh, so they had they do generally report that the sound level is better uh, the word significantly is difficult to put in there I think um, because it still is um, what people refer to as an annoying sound. It's a repetitive, popping, high-pitched sound that, that tends to, to fall into that category. Um, but we do hear that, you know, at least in, in the, with the relocation, it is less while you're inside your house. Of course, when you're outside in your backyard, it, it still is an issue. We have seen an increase, however, in complaints from those uh, two residences on Henderson and Townley. <coughs> So we're a little bit of a trade-off there, but that's fewer residents than were impacted previously, if that helps. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Uh, go to Councillor Patterson. Uh, back to Councillor Green, then we'll go to the public. You're okay. Uh, then we'll go to the public after Councillor Patterson. Go ahead, Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor, and um, thank you for the report, Mr. Meekle. I know it's been a been an interesting endeavor to try and resolve the pickleball uh, dilemma that is is ongoing. Just um, on the um, on the cementitious fencing, um, could you share with us what if if that was an option that council wished to pursue? Um, the the board the boarding which would be eight feet high and is quite industrial and not necessarily. Um, manufactured for its appearance. So, um, what would the what would the exterior appearance of this board around the courts? What would the appearance of that look like in the park? What, what what's the finish going to be like, Mr. Miko? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to Councillor Patterson. Uh, there are some options available. So, the the board itself, our understanding is it, um, and the reason I think it. Um, generally is suspected that it gives greater noise mitigation. It's actually two boards and uh, with a space in between the two. So on the inside would be this fiber felt board. Um, that my understanding is it's also actually made from partially from recycled pop bottles, plastic pop bottles. Uh, and they can provide a color to that. It can be green. They, for an additional cost, of course, you could actually put our logo on it if you wanted those kinds of things. Uh, and then the outer side, so a space in between and the outer side facing Outside is the cementitious board, the hardy panel, uh, which generally comes in a light green color. So it wouldn't be tremendously different than the plywood boards that are already there around the existing courts. Uh, and we could certainly repaint the plywood boards so it was more of a matching color. Um, and that's certainly a possibility. So I don't think it greatly changes the, the actual aesthetics look of the lacrosse box. For those that have seen it, it's not necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing a lacrosse box as it is, but uh, uh, it certainly has been repurposed well and is, and is well used as a pickleball court. Go ahead, Councilor Patterson. Yes, thank you. Now, my understanding of um, sort of what the information is in the industry right now, and, and certainly with the uh, uh, professional building, commercial buildings um, uh, associations, is that um, a hundred meter distance solves the problem. 70 meters with acoustical barriers is often effective. Um, 50 meters with acoustical barriers is really dependent, I guess, on the tolerance of, of neighboring. Is, is, is that somewhat accurate in your, from the research that you've done? Mr. Meikle? Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Patterson. Uh, that is my understanding. I believe the research there comes from the U.S. and they're a little further ahead in understanding this issue. Uh, so that is part of, again, my understanding, part of the research that Pickleball BC and the BC Recreation and Parks Association is hoping to determine and provide some standards around that. Uh, right now, the standards through Pickleball BC, my understanding is 50 meters is sort of the bare minimum and that noise attenuation can be considered at that. Um, we, of course, in Oak Bay don't have many options that provide much greater distance than that away from residences. So, thank you. 
person. And and do you know if any, if there has been any um, installations in BC of more of the thermal blankets that are used in industrial um, noise dampening environments? I know they're they're a lot more expensive, but I'm just wondering if there's any any information there. Mr. Meikle. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Patterson. Uh, that is not one that actually came to our attention in, in our discussions. Uh, doesn't mean that it's not out there and hasn't been tried, but uh, in, in our discussions with uh, members of, of the industry and with other uh, parks associations um, in the local region and some from the mainland, that did not come up. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to the uh, members of the public who wish to address us on this matter right now. We do have, uh, I have uh, people who have registered to speak first, and then if anybody else wishes to address us, they're more than welcome. Um, so up in my order I have here is, uh, first up is uh, Ms. Uh, Connie McCann, who's the president of the Victoria Regional Pickleball Association. Um, welcome. And uh, uh, so we have our standard practice, have a seat, and you can turn the microphone on. If you just state your name and uh, municipality of residence for the record, uh, we typically have uh, try and keep comments to three minutes, but we're not totally draconian in this format. It's a bit less formal, so welcome. Thank you very oh, much. Can you turn on your microphone, please? Just push the button in the middle. There we Thank go. Thank you very much, Mayor and members of the committee. Um, I am Connie McCann. I am an Oak Bay resident, apartment 205, 1178 Beach Drive. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a player at Carnarvon Park, and I am the president and here this evening of the Victoria Regional Pickleball Association. And you do have a letter before you um, from me. And I would really would like to start off with that this sport is on fire. Since January this year, um, every major uh, paper except time, the, the Times, Newsweek, have featured articles. And last month, May 25th, uh, Sports Illustrated um, had a giant article um, on pickleball. And the big tennis magazine called Tennis this month is completely dedicated to pickleball. So the growth in this sport is not going away. And we find that here in the Greater Victoria Region. We have 400 members from every municipality, a, a substantial number from Oak Bay as well. Um, so what happens when you have a sport that's on fire is that we are overusing the courts because you haven't been able to catch up to the courts that are needed. And players want dedicated courts, which you offer at Carnarvon Park. So they are well-used courts. If we have more dedicated courts through the region, your usage at Carnarvon is going to back off and your noise complaints will back off. So I would like to keep you, you know, keep that in your mind when you're um, going towards your decision making. And I do want to thank your new director of Parks and Recreation because he has done a well-researched, well-presented report to you. Um, the association believes you may want to consider, but it's, it's not, you know, we don't think it's definitive, but you may want to consider that Pickleball BC, who we are associated with, and uh, the BC Parks and Recreation Association are doing sound testing. That's quite important, that sound testing, but it's not perhaps a big part of your decision making that you have before you with the options. The association thinks that if you move forward with an option, um, we do know about acoustic defense or acoustic block. Um, we know from reports in the US that it has some degree, it softens the sound a bit, uh, which is good. We know that actually you can use, um, there's so many different balls, so many different paddles. You can actually soften the sound a little bit and paddle technology is going at a rapid pace. So that's going to be something going forward in the future we all will watch for. Um, I think of the options before you, perhaps option number one with acoustic defense because it's known, and the association is offering $4,000 towards any sound um, 
measures that you put forward. So that is a definitive offer on our part. We don't make a lot of money, but we're more than willing to be at the table. We're more than willing to advocate for uh, more testing. If panels are put in and more testing is needed, we'll advocate to Pickleball BC and the BC Parks and Rec Association for testing afterwards as well. And we do have a member who's going to be at Carnarvon um, to assist with the testing. So we want to partner with you. And I want to tell you those courts are so valuable. And you will lessen the noise if you step up to the plate and you join with other municipalities to get a pickleball hub in the region. You will lessen the noise at Carnarvon, I can guarantee it. And if you need any assistance with working with other municipalities, we're there to assist you. I presented to the uh, West Shore Parks and Recreation Society on Thursday night about a pickleball hub. We're working with the City of Victoria to make Topaz Park a very appropriate location as a pickleball hub. And I would really applaud my municipality if they work with other municipalities for those hubs. It's difficult for you in Oak Bay to get a hub because it's so urban. How can you possibly put courts 100 meters away? You can't, but we need local courts. So I support that. We'll put money towards what you need to do, and we'll work with you. And thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCann. Uh, I have next, uh, go ahead. yes, thank you. Uh, we have next uh, uh, Dave Harrison, and then following that will be Stephen Stead, or Steed, if we can get the pronunciation. And uh, so if I could just invite Mr. Is Mr. Harrison here with us this evening? Yes. Welcome. And just the same same order, just if you can come in, just state your name for the record and municipality of residence. And just turn the microphone on. It's just the silver button in the middle there. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Does that work? Yes. Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk. I hadn't prepared to, but uh, my neighbors need a front man, and I'm it. Um, I am a, a resident of Allenby that uh, Mr. Will talk to, and uh, we have expressed concerns of the noise associated with pickleball for the last five years. I've been here a few times to talk to council, and um, really, our concern is please do something. It's uh, the move it, moving to the lacrosse box was a good step, but the reason there's not as many letters and emails to council is that we just got tired of it. We're, doesn't get doesn't seem to advance us that far or as far as we would like it to go and uh, if you could actually put something in place that would help mitigate the sound and pe people don't quite appreciate that the sound is from 12 hours a day it's it's not a half hour racket session and we have tennis courts we enjoy the tennis players they're nice and civil and, and uh, but the, the racquetball as according to the previous speaker since the other municipalities are not open to the, the association's efforts, there's much more usage at Carnarvon than anywhere else, I, I believe. And that's really stretched that time window we have to live with the noise for. A suggestion, uh, perhaps having the pickleball associate in charge of the sound decibel measuring is not something that would, would sit very well with my neighbors. It's uh, the fox and the chickens come to mind. And I had another little note here, but that's uh, as long as I got through that uh, we would like to see something done and it's just do something. So it's really a really difficult to, to ask for anything more than that. If, uh, if you think the lower cost one will work, we're, we're happy to support and we'll even offer to uh, help you install them if you wish. It is that kind of desperate for our backyard barbecues and uh, Father's Day was a mess, right? As you can imagine, it was nothing but yeah. my 70s rock music doesn't quite drown out the, the neighbor's complaints. So. Anyway, thanks so, thanks so much for listening and uh, appreciate your considering our concerns. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Harrison. You might try 80s rock with the, the syntho drums might help oh, cover the sound uh, a little bit more effectively. I just got to maybe orient speakers in the right way. Those old uh, 250 watt act guys aren't really doing their jobs anymore. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have up next, uh, Stephen, I, I'm going to go with Stead, but it could be Steed. I'll uh, let him introduce his, uh, himself. And then if anybody who is online, again, on, I'll make the last call since no one has indicated so far wishes to address council. Um, this is the last of the registered speakers. Uh, please raise your hand. I, no, not here? Okay. Um, is, um, if Mr. Stead is online and wishes to speak, this would be the chance to raise your hand. Um, but if not, uh, we had them registered to be in person, so. What's that? Oh, thank you, yeah. We're just gonna fix the microphone in the room here. Uh, so not seeing anybody there. We do have a letter, however, from that, uh, from uh, uh, Mr. Stead uh, in our uh, correspondence here as well. Um, so go ahead, Councilor Braithwaite, and then Councilor Green. Um, thank you, Mayor, and through you to Mr. Meikle. Mr. Meikle, I thought we had um, lessened the number of hours of play. I is that not correct? Or is it still up to 12 hours a day that um, the pickleballers can Play pickleball. Mr. Mikkel. Uh Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, that was actually the first option we brought to Council last spring prior to the relocation. And uh, um, <clears throat> my recollection is Council chose not to limit the hours of play, um, given we were in the midst of a pandemic at the time and this was a healthy outdoor physical activity for many people. So hours of play were left alone. Um, I certainly could provide some more detail on, on hours of play. Right now we do know there are some prime times, uh, generally 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and then there's some quieter times, and then unfortunately evening times are busier again as well. So, And just going to follow up to that question, if you don't mind, it's just the there was also a request that people use it, or I'm not sure if it's enforced or not, of using the quieter balls in the evenings. Is that after a certain time, is that is that still in place? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, again, similar, that was part of the first report last spring. Uh, we certainly had challenges enforcing the use of foam balls. It uh, changes the sport, changes the dynamic of the, of the play for players, uh, so they were not in favour of using uh, the pickleball. Um, and with the relocation change, my understanding is we were to take a look at what the relocation meant in terms of, of changes to sound come back to Council with sound mitigation options. If we wanted to carry on and look at uh, implementing a foam ball in the evenings, uh, there would be some staff resources required to enforce that kind of a, a change there. Yeah, go ahead, Councilor Braithwaite. Um, thank you so much, Mayor, and through you to Mr. Meikle. Um, I, I guess that, you know, when I listen to um, the concerns of the neighbours, and I, I do feel for them because that it would be very difficult, I think, to listen to that for 12 hours a day. Um, uh, I, I wonder at uh, the other locations, other location possibilities within the municipality, and the only one that comes to my mind would be Henderson, like behind the rec center on the opposite side of where the where the tennis courts are, perhaps, because that would be to me the only place behind the baseball diamond. I think where we might even have perhaps enough room to put something like that. But I mean, do you, is there any other spot in the whole municipality where that would be? where you could be 100 metres away from, from housing to be able to do that? Mr. Mikko? Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through to Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, we are assessing some options. I, I don't have any at this point that give us that 100 metres uh, that are not complicated by other uh, uses and or that you would be displacing other users in, in doing so. So uh, that's part of the challenge. And the other part of the challenge is finding space my understanding from pickleball players is, you know, at, at a minimum you need four courts, which, um, you know, to fit four courts in a space, we've got five courts takes the whole lacrosse box as it is. Uh, so it, it does become a little more difficult to find that space without displacing some other user and or being closer to other residents. Oh, ahead, My last comment would be, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's, if we do choose to do um, some sort of a mitigation and we do choose to go with Kusta Block, um, I think 
we definitely should take the <laughs> take them them up on their offer of uh, of the four thousand dollars because that would be cover almost one fifth of the cost of it. So I think that would be a move in the right direction. Although I'd like to see us be able to come up with a a better solution, perhaps for the for the residents around there. Councilor Green. Thank you very much, Director Meikle. <laughs> um, and also congratulations. I, I was remiss in not saying that. Um, I think in this situation we're looking at balance and, and trying to find um, options that, that are helpful. I, I don't think any of them are mutually exclusive. I think we can, we can perhaps do the mitigation. Uh, we have a generous offer from Ms. McCann uh, to assist with option one. Uh, and I think we can continue the hunt for uh, a proper location, perhaps, if that's possible. Um, we may put two courts in one location, three in another, something like that, or, and or, um, and, and also monitor the research that's being done by Pickleball BC on, on acoustics and on sound. So I, I, I see it as sort of a three-pronged approach that we, 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 we continue with the research, we do something short-term because we're looking at a short-term and long-term solution. And I do uh, appreciate the comments of, of residents, and I also appreciate the difficulties that we face in find la finding land that would be suitable. So I say, why don't we do the three-pronged, accept the very kind offer from our local pickleball uh, group. I think that's, that's very generous. Um, so that gives us a solution for the short-term, and it, it, it mitigates the concerns that have been expressed on behalf of neighbors. We continue to seek appropriate land. There may be a partnership possible with the University of Victoria um, as well. And then we continue with um, monitoring research that's being done by Pickleball BC. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Green. Um, I don't see other hands up on this one. I just, a couple of comments. One, I mean, I, I do agree we should try something, but obviously cost is an issue when we're looking at, at it being temporary, so you know, spending money where it's going to come out again is... Um, so I guess one question I have on that is, do we know if any of these materials like, uh, can be added to this and then taken down and used in other locations, or is it essentially once they're in, they're kind of a permanent installation, Mr. Meikle? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. A uh, couple of thoughts there, one being uh, we, we likely are talking at, at least three years when we originally uh, proposed the court relocation. We were in the sort of four to five year right. temporary range, so we're, we're probably three to four years now. Uh, and yes, that uh, acoustic fence, especially the rubberized material, is uh, more easily used elsewhere and can be used as a wind barrier, for example, at any of our tennis courts. Uh, so it does have some reusability depending on the state it is after a couple of years of use, a few years of use there. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think that's, that answers my question. Then I was uh, I, on this one. I, I was reading the report and I had the sort of this, the feeling like there was a general sense that the second the hush felt uh, option may have a, a higher acoustical attenuation, um, but not tested. So we don't really know for sure. So I mean, I'm I'm frankly personally comfortable with either of those two, the first two options. And I don't. If, is this something that we could? essentially give uh, approval to either one and, and if there's any ability to because is there any ability for us to do additional testing on these two options or is it essentially what we have here is is the, the best we're going to get without having to do travels to their factories and things mr meikle uh thank you your worship my understanding would be that uh additional testing really requires the material to be installed uh to actually get a sense of how it works in that context in that environment um so would be necessary to take that next step and be a bit of the pilot project in testing that. Uh, I should also note that uh, the research to be conducted province-wide by Pickleball BC and the BC Rec and Parks Association uh, is not to be done by them themselves. It, uh, as, as mentioned by another speaker, uh, they are hiring a third-party consultant, sound engineer, to do that research, so. Yeah, thank you for that. I, and I would say that the, the the, hen and the, the fox in the hen house is not entirely apt because I think they probably have the most to gain or lose by this having uh, community acceptance. So go ahead, uh, Councillor Green. Would you like a motion or? Yes, yeah, in order. So I will move uh, the staff recommendation for option one, which is the acoustic fencing. Um, with, with, yes, with funding from 
our very generous partners, um, our local pickleball group, which has offered, I believe, $4,000 to defray some of that cost. Second. Moved and seconded. If there's some reason we're getting a bit of a feedback when I still have my microphone on. Uh, so move the, the pieces to go with acoustic fence here. Um, is there any other discussion on this item? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, there was a suggestion to possibly delay, maybe for a couple of weeks or till um, uh, uh, maybe the next committee, the whole, just to see if the input um, on the um, sound testing could potentially assist with us with, with the decision. Um, uh, however, we know that there's an issue. We have a sort of ad hoc uh, testing. Um, we might have more more specific testing, but. Um, I, I definitely I, I agree with uh, the desire to move ahead with something, uh, um, but I certainly wouldn't want to be throwing throwing money away. Um, so, uh, would it make sense to just hold off for 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 one month uh, before we actually um, uh, implement this I item, just to make sure that any inputs that come in from the sound testing could help guide us a little bit with, with some real evidence? Thank you. Thank you, Council Token. Mr. Meikle, is there anything in the plans of uh, Pickleball BC or other factors that might give us additional information within the next uh, month? Uh, not to my knowledge, your, or, sorry, through the, through the, the chair to Councillor Zelka, not to my, to my knowledge, thank you. Um, the research, as I mentioned, the province-wide research is really focused on creating those standards of locating courts within districts. Um, there's sort of that difference between measuring and understanding the noise as it is without any mitigation measures versus research of implementing those mitigation measures. And I do not believe that they are doing pre-post testing where they install mitigation measures, test afterwards to see what that impact looks like. So uh, we would be one of the first places in my understanding to be able to offer that opportunity to that study. And I'm not uh, certain that they will be starting the process in the next four weeks either. So. Um, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I appreciate the input, uh, and if it's not going to be done in a, in a post-haste uh, post sort of way, then uh, it, it makes sense to move forward with, with something. Uh, so the question with respect to the um, acoustic, uh, acoustic block, uh, it sounds like it's possible we could put some sort of logo or some sort of information on, on the material. I don't know whether that's additional ch charge or not, but um, if there's going to be in some uh, monies uh, added to by uh, the uh, nonprofit association, I presume it's nonprofit, Victoria Regional Pickleball Association. Would we want their logo to also be on uh, this material as well? I just wanted to know so, so some idea or whether it would just be an Oak Bay um, uh, material. Uh, is there anything that we could do to help uh, with respect to good neighborly policies and ensuring that folks know what the expectations are when they come to this uh, to, to this pickleball courts that that this um, acoustic fencing signage could potentially help with I just put that out there as, as a question mr. Meikle is there any intention of having any signage or uh, things on on this we put it in go ahead uh, thank you your worship through you to uh, councillor Zelka um, I'm actually not certain that Acoustic Defense provides that option of, of logoing or putting something on. It was actually in reference to the fiber board, the fiber and cementitious board, where they offered that opportunity of a logo uh, at a higher cost, of course. Uh, but we certainly would be interested in putting some signage up, and um, and there is actually a proposal to uh, to do a bit of a public art piece to create a signage there that I'll bring be bringing forward in July. Um, so we would certainly encourage some signage to recognize the support of, of the Victoria Re Regional Pickleball Association. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Stilke. Any other discussion? Councillor Braithwaite. Thank you. Uh, the motion is on the floor. Go ahead, Councillor Patrick. Yeah, I, generally I do support this, but I, I also, um, you know, I really feel for the, the residents who feel that they don't put forward any comments because they uh, no longer feel that their comments are are being considered. And so I think as part of this, because we are going into the summer months, and I, I certainly appreciate the um, Mr. Meikle and the staff's dilemma on this. It is a growing sport, and um, I don't think it's going away. It's age-friendly, gender, and socioeconomic friendly. So. It is something that hopefully in the region solutions will be found to uh, to to mitigate in part this but I think for for the for the residents who um, who feel that 
you know, their lives have really been compromised. I think it's really important for us to um, keep in touch with them. Um, in particular, if we go with option one, also seek feedback from those residents to to understand if um, if this solution that we are attempting to try, um, if it if it does mitigate in some way, uh, you know their expo exposure to the noise. Because I think I think that's really important. Also, you know you don't like to lose all of your enjoyment of your yard during the the summer in Victoria. So I I think it's important that we also consider their needs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patton. Councillor Braithwaite, you want to? No, you're good. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Green. I'm sorry, just quickly, <clears throat> should we also think about now that the critical area of COVID has passed, should we look at hours of operation in the evenings? And that's just a question through you to Mr. Meikle. Um, more or less a rhetorical question. I'm hoping that we will monitor hours in the evening as well, um, those evening hours for as Councillor Patterson points out, for the benefit of adjacent neighbours and the enjoyment of their properties. Sure. At this point, there's no direction to bring that back, but um, if, I think we, you know, if there's a motion that wants to be made here to, to give that to, give that to come back at some time in the future, we could do that. But Mr. Meek, what, what is in your work plan for this? Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you to the committee. Uh, we would be certainly wanting to do some pre and post testing, as I mentioned, and that would be we're hoping to fit that in with the provincial study that's going on and or either have ourselves do that. So if the uh, <clears throat> paneling is installed, we'd be looking at some measurements there. I think it would be then after that point if we see some uh, change or insignificant change, et cetera, and we're still experiencing some challenges for neighbours that we then might look at those options of, of ours. Uh, restrictions. Uh, those certainly come with some staff resources to lock up and monitor and enforce those rules, uh, but that is certainly a possibility for the future. Uh, also to note too, just to be clear, that uh, the panelling would sort of circle around the lacrosse box to also help mitigate the sound to those residents across Henderson at Henderson and Townley, so uh, there would be mitigation panels on that side of the lacrosse box as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. Thank you very much. Oh, Councillor Appleton. Your Worship, I just noted in the staff report that there was um, some request to determine the source of funds uh, should the approval be given. Uh, so just wondering whether staff wanted to comment on, on that specific element or whether we've just got these, these options ahead of us to, to choose from. Uh, Mr. Meikle, do you want direction on, the, on where to source those funds? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, we were also seeking uh, direction as to the preferred funding source, and I not is Christopher uh, Director Payne with us. He, it uh, may be best for him to comment on those options. Uh, sure, thank you. It may be worthwhile just to um, uh, for Mr. is Mr. Payne is here, and I'm just looking on my he is uh, online. Uh, perhaps Mr. Payne, our Director of Financial Services, if you can give a quick uh, summary of the three options, the um, the stability reserve, the capital works reserve, and the capital budget. Uh, if you can just maybe outline the options of those three in front of us. Uh, yes, thank you. Good evening, uh, Your Worship and uh, committee members. Um, those are the three uh, options that we've uh, put before you. Um, it's just a, a um, it just provides council with the ability to select the funding source. Um, rather than uh, staff selecting one for you. The financial stability uh, reserve is a new reserve that was uh, um, directed by council uh, early in the year when we uh, po uh, portioned our uh, accumulated surplus. So that's that's one that can be used um, when there isn't um, uh, direct funding set aside in the financial plan. And since this wasn't put in the 2022 financial plan, uh, that's a that's a funding source that could be used. The other funding source is the infrastructure renewal reserve. Generally, that's envisioned for much larger infrastructure, uh, but it's not restricted, so it can be used. Um, alternatively, council could direct that this item be put in the 2023 budget, and uh, staff will um, bring forward the most appropriate funding source at that time. Thank you for those, so I'll take a motion, and we can speak to it. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. I, Your Worship, I would move um, that uh, the source for the uh, sound mitigation be taken from the financial and service level stability reserve. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion on that? Go ahead, Councillor Zelka. 
So I just wanted to confirm, if we do uh, approve that, uh, uh, um, the service um, stability fund, uh, will it require a, a, a new bylaw for the financial financial bylaw, or can we move forward with it? Thank you, Councillor Zelka. Mr. Payne? Your Worship, the financial plan bylaw is summarized on a very high level, which means that if there is underspending in the year, uh, it may be possible not to need to amend that bylaw. Um, for uh, for something this size, but that necessarily requires that other spending doesn't occur, which which is often. Um, so what we do is at quarter three we look at um, our financial plan bylaw and uh, and uh, forecast and make sure that uh, none of those expenditure limits are are going to be exceeded. If they are, then we bring forward a financial plan bylaw amendment. So I can't tell you right now whether or not that will occur. There's a good likelihood that it that it won't occur um, just because of how high level that financial plan bylaw is. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Just want to make sure that we're not making more work for staff. Thanks. I thank you, Councilor Zilka. Any other discussion? Don't see any, so we'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed? Can I just get a motion to receive the report Move as proceed. well? Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you. Possible motion arising. Uh, with respect to the uh, soon to come Parks, Rec, and Culture Committee, um, uh, I do note that in July we'll be getting a report with respect to it coming forward. Uh, this, is, this would be a, a, a perfect item to, uh, to be uh, uh, referred to that, to that uh, uh, committee, uh, um, maybe as a first item. Uh, is this item, with respect to pickleball, uh, expected to come back to Council any time in the fall? And if not, could we possibly uh, add this to their uh, work plan? Uh, at this point, I just wanted to ask the ask staff what, what the plans may be for this uh, new newly struck committee at this point. Sure, thank you, uh, Mr. Meikle. At this point, this doesn't seem to have a thing to come back, but at a time. But go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Zelka, I did mention that uh, should we put up the paneling, the acoustic defense paneling, that uh, and still experience uh, significant complaints and concerns from. Uh, neighbors that then we would look at some of those options such as limiting the time of play uh, or limiting the days of play perhaps uh, and those would certainly come back to council which could then be referred to the parks recreation uh, and culture advisory committee so there there is certainly that possibility if, uh, in the future thank you Councilor Zelka. Uh, and I'm fine, fine to leave it for now unless uh, another uh, member of council wants to uh, at, create their work plan at this point thank you Thank you very much. I don't see any of their hands popping up. I think we're done with this item. Mr. Meikle, thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, so we have uh, a number of other items on the agenda. I'm just cognizant of time. We've used uh, an hour and seven minutes of our three hours allocated. So I'd like to get to the other items and have time on them. So we'll try and keep our, uh, our discussion as, as brief as possible. We don't have any um, members of the public who have registered to speak for the next item. So if anybody is interested in speaking, uh, this is item 6.2 on the side, sidewalk patio expansion program. Um, please do raise your hand through either through the 1855 number or through the uh, Zoom application. Um, I'm going to go to Mr. Weber, uh, our planner. Oh, you wish to speak as well? Yes. Okay, so I'll, we'll get to you then. And I'll, I'll call for the people in the, yeah, uh, to speak to that. So we're just going to have uh, the order of business here. Staff will do a quick introduction. We'll take questions from council, then we'll take comments and questions from the public, and then we'll come back to this table for consideration. So with that, uh, Mr. Weber, you're up. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Building on the previous direction from council, what is before you this evening is a governance review for the sidewalk patio expansion project developed by our consultant, Mary Baton, in consultation with the community, build community building and planning department staff. The governance review is a high level document that briefly outlines the scope and objectives of the project, resource allocations, project deliverables and milestones, community engagement strategies, which were developed in coordination with our in-house communications team, operational impacts to staff and criteria for success. Approval of the governance review would officially kick off the project and staff would then proceed with conducting a request for proposals for a consultant to carry out the work. Um, as outlined in the review, the next project deliverable that would tentatively come um, that would tentatively come before council would be a summary of the project uh, of the public engagement in the fall this year, followed by a presentation of the draft permitting process in the late winter of this year or possibly early spring of um, 2023. Staff are recommending that the committee approve the sidewalk expansion project governance review. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Weber. Just uh, want to make sure people are aware that uh, 
there is correspondence, including some late correspondence that came in, and we have a printed copy of that late correspondence in front of us. Uh, so, um, are there questions from members of the committee to uh, Mr. Weber or any other staff member? Don't see any at this point, so at this point I will go to the public. Uh, so if, if you want to come up to the microphone, uh, you're welcome to address uh, Council. Again, uh, you're here for the original uh, ask, so if you could just state your name and municipality residence, then we will, uh, and then you're welcome to address Council. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Your Worship and Councillors. My name is Zane St. Philip, um, 2006 Runnymede Avenue. I live in Oak Bay. Um, I'm one of the partners and owners of Prestige Picture Framing. We've been there for since 1983. Yeah, so um, you have a letter before you that I, that I sent, to, um, sent to you all and to engineering and to planning. I'm not sure if I'm here at the right time to uh, be discussing this because it's not really gone forward. So I'm not really sure of the protocol of how this is going to be, but I thought I would just take this opportunity just to express to you how, how um, uh, the frustration that we're having. Um, uh, so I'm going to just read some informal notes. We understand this is a community-involved process coming up for the extension of outside dining patios on streets. I have noticed, for instance, how well these facilities work in areas such as Oak Bay Village and Estevan Village. I have no opinion on them as they do not directly affect us. They may be a good idea for the community, but, w but the one in front of our business is not in the right location. The outdoor construction at Oak Bay and Fowl Bay, and I call it a construction, I wouldn't really call it an outdoor dining patio, it, it is a, it's a construction. Um, uh, it's, it has seriously affected our business for the last two years. Uh, Candé Whitecourt, who is the owner and operator of Global uh, Hair, she is our neighbour there, had told me that um, that, uh, um, that uh, the owner of Blighty's Bistro had asked her permission and, and she gave that permission. However, she had no idea that it would go on for so long and what it would look like. And uh, she's really very unhappy about it as well. And, and she has signed the letter that we've sent to you all. Um, I'd also like to introduce my one of my partners, uh, Lale Manili. She is uh, with us, always been three partners there. And she's the young woman that's going to be taking over the business because we're all getting old. Um, uh, as for myself and my partners at Prestige Framing, we were not consulted, and when I asked at the Municipal Hall, I was told it was allowed temporarily. When I objected to the safety of a structure in this location, I was told it had been approved by engineering, and that it was to uh, last until the end of, uh, of November of last year. Um, my letter, I described, the three, three parts to my letter, reduced parking is one of the problems, um, the, um, there's an item called the construction is not necessary and I'll go into that and then the other one is the safety of it. I described the hardship it has caused for our business as to the access to our business and the ability for our customers to drop off and pick up. There is also difficulty in seeing the signage and storefronts when driving west on Oak Bay Avenue. I would also urge you to please make an on-site visit to this location and look at, look at it from across the street at the Spin uh, Cycle Place and you can easily see it's not a place for such a construction. It's a real hindrance to traffic and to safety and, and uh, it's a very, very narrow passage for bikes to get through when there's buses there. Um, so it's not, it's the traffic coming through but it's also really affected our parking and I go into that why we went from four parking places down to basically one. The good news, the previous owner of Blighty's Bistro, Rochelle, who we knew for 20 years, used the front sidewalk in front of her restaurant for bistro tables, which worked very well. There's almost the same amount of space available to the owner for outside eating as in the construction. So in front of our building there, there's four businesses and there is 10 feet before we get to the five foot municipal sidewalk. So we have 10 feet there, so they, probably 10 by 15 feet where there could be outdoor dining bistro and it could be a truly a, a, a patio. I mean, I don't want to design his, uh, you know, the, the, new, the new person's patio, but also he could have a, easily have um, an awning over that. So it'd be, be quite nice. 
Anecdotally, the structure has ra rarely been used. I don't think it's been used since last September. It was built with a solid fence to shield it from traffic noise, and so people who use it would not be uh, sitting in the line because they're sitting there trying to eat, and it's everybody's waiting to go through the light up at uh, Fowl Bay. Uh, far more people use the sidewalk bistro seating that that Rochelle used to do there than this this um, construction has ever ever seen. The corner is often a place where the police I don't I don't maybe you know the police kind of have a little place where they catch people with their cell phones and their seat belts and speeding and everything else. So I go out and I talk to the police and I say to them I know you can't say anything about this but do you think this is a good idea? And they go. They, 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 obviously they can't say anything, it's not their, their point, but as I say anecdotally, they, they uh, really question that it's there. Um, it's not my place to prove uh, that this structure is dangerous and should not be there. I think I urge the municipality to conduct an independent study. It would, I would be very surprised if any sa safety consultant would recommend this location for an outdoor dining construction. So that's basically what I wanted to say. I lived in Oak Bay all this time, and I really love living here. Imagine coming down and speaking to council in such an informal way. This is really the place to live. I, of, I often call that Mayberry. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but uh, I really wanted to just take this opportunity to let you know that it really has affected us, and I don't, I don't think it has to be there. I think there's a really, really good alternative for this uh, this gentleman who's newly bought the business. I don't know if you're aware, but um, there was a, a, an owner after Rochelle, and then a new person has bought it, and he's turning it into a restaurant called Tapas on Oak. So I'm not sure if the, the permission for him to have a sidewalk um, in the construction there is passed from the last owner to this one. So I thought I would just bring up all those items. Thank you very much for that. And we do have your letter here as well. Um, and I think just that as Mr. Weber kind of outlined here, you're right, this was a temporary process. Uh, we put it in place to, to help. And now that time is ending. And so we're just, this is the question in front of us tonight is what are we doing to kind of manage that? And, and so this is the suggestion here is we, we reach out to stakeholders and come up with a final plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not here so much to talk about the individual piece, but I can tell you that your your comments do help us sort of frame the, the conversation here on this so yes. and how we manage the next step. And that, that deadline is March of next year is the is the deadline for us having that resolved. So just so you understand the timelines that uh, we're sure, working Of with. course. Yes, we yeah. do understand that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Okay. Yep. Uh, is there any other members of the public who wish to speak to us on this matter, either electronically or in person? I think the people in the room next door can hear us, uh, can they? Okay, just making sure. Uh, they did They did come in when I called last time, so I figured that probably worked. Um, okay, uh, so I don't see any other hands up from the public, so back to this table. Are there any questions of staff? Go ahead, Councillor Green. Thank you very much, and through you to Mr. Horan. Thank you, Mr. Horan, for being here. And Oh no, I have the wrong person. It's Mr. Weber, isn't it? it Sorry. Is. <laughs> I was thinking about engineering. This is also an engineering issue, I guess. Um, thank you, and through you to Mr. Weber. Mr. Weber, um, are, are you, have you done any sort of, even a visual uh, visit to the area just to look at it? And I'll make some comments later on, but uh, I just wondered if, if you'd had a chance to take a look at this particular location. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Green. I just want to just caution us not to go too far into specifics, because we have here a a governance of process of how we're doing next so I don't as much as I appreciate the, the specifics of this one I don't I that's pro, that's not the necessarily the direction but I, I will certainly allow the question to Mr. Weber if uh, if you're familiar with this uh, with the with the site at the corner of uh, Oak Bay Avenue and Fowl Bay. Thank you Worship and through you yes um, certainly yes I have um, walked past that patio many times um, I don't believe I was with the district when it was initially approved and built, but um, I certainly am familiar with it. Thank you. Do you have any other specific questions, Councilor Green, on that? I don't at this time, thanks. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Worship, and, and through you to staff, just in, in response to the comments from the public, I, I guess I would just note, uh, just ask Mr. Uh, Weber just to confirm that uh, Included in the scope of work for for the analysis that's contemplated is, as as mentioned in the staff report, is both 
uh, reviewing and updating the patio design guidelines and reviewing an up, up to date transportation and pedestrian safety standards for users in and around the patios, which would follow from so just just to confirm Mr. Weber that would uh, create a set of standards for what would be the acceptable design and placement of those types of patios and it may very well be that if even if something was uh, allowed under the current temporary use under new standards uh, it might be reviewed and be found to not be compliant is that is that correct Mr. Weber yes thank you and through you you are uh, absolutely correct that is one of the main objectives of this project and certainly um, yeah, those aspects of the of it will be assessed, and um, it may entail individual patio re-review to um, verify compliance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weber. If I might ask, uh, as we go through questions, if you could just speak up a little bit or sit a bit closer to your microphone. It's a bit it's a bit quiet in the room here. Uh, I have uh, next Councillor Patterson and Councillor Zalka. Yes, thank you. And through you to Mr. Weber on this one. Um, in the report, thank you for the report. Uh, it, it does say that um, we will engage with the public and communicating with stakeholders, um, uh, district restaurants, public houses and cafes. Um, so I just wanted to ensure that merchants that are in the villages who are not food vendors will also be consulted as part of this process and perhaps in a more fulsome way than general stakeholders will be because they do have operate businesses in those areas. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. And this refers, to, I think, specifically to the internal and external stakeholders within the, the, the suggestion here. Um, Mr. Weber? Yes, thank you, Worship, and through you. There will be a more intensive stakeholder identification process um, as the project gets underway, but um, certainly that is our intent to identify those um, those people are groups of people who would be most affected by the patios, which certainly include the um, neighboring businesses to existing patios. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Patterson. Thank you. And uh, this question may better be answered by the Director of um, Financial Services for the, for the district. Just with respect to um, following up on Councillor Appleton's comment, uh, the Village Parking Reserve Fund can be allocated for walking, cycling, public transportation. I'm wondering if any of the funding that is in that reserve fund might be utilized depending upon uh, the results that come out of this first part of the process and, and any information that's uh, gleaned from that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Payne, can you speak to funding use of what comes out of at the end, end point of this project? Uh, Your Worship, the um, reserving question, um, it has to be used for capital construction. Um, so that would be capital construction of, uh, of parking facilities or uh, as mentioned, um, active transportation um, capital. Uh, so I don't, um, I'd have to look a bit closer to, to give a definitive answer, but th those are the general guidelines. Thank you. Uh, I have next Councillor Zalka, then was it Councillor Braithwaite? Did you have your hand up? No. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And um, uh, I, I, I note that uh, there's a, a desire here to put out an RFP and uh, get a consultant, and then the consultant will do some sort of engagement, uh, it looks like with staff of uh, some sort to come up with a permanent process to regulate sidewalk and parking stall patios. Um, I would hope that um, maybe quite early in the process that we could have our advisory planning commission also involved in this process to make sure that uh, um, in a cost-effective way we have a, a fulsome collection of ideas that are captured quite early in the process. Uh, I know later on in the process as we get closer to maybe to bylaw presentation, I'm sure it'll go to the APC to make sure not just in alignment with the official community plan, but also for further collection of ideas. But with respect to governance, I think this would be a very good use of, of our many volunteers uh, uh, to provide input on something like this. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take that as a suggestion. They're certainly listed in the stakeholders list that are here if this uh, moves forward. Councillor Appleton? Uh, Your Worship, I would just make the motion to uh, receive the report. Move and second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed? Uh, and Your Worship, I would uh, move that Council approve the sidewalk patio expansion governance review.
We have been seconded. Uh, is there a discussion? Council Green? Yes, thank you, and I really appreciate it. Um, and yes, I think the focus is on the governance and on the future of, of, of these patio uh, locations. Um, but if we use an example f around the p bullet number three, which is, which is uh, talking about transportation and public safety and pedestrian safety, this is a particularly difficult location now. And the reason, one of the reasons is because what has changed is that Richardson is closed at Fowl Bay. And I don't know if any of you have been at the intersection of Fowl Bay and Oak Bay Avenue now at, at peak periods in particular. Um, it is incredibly choked and congested. So I think certainly the environment around this location has changed, the traffic patterns have changed, and I do believe um, that this is a good example of why we need to do a review and, and bring some, some standards to this. And I, you know, I think the core village area is important. I remember, I recall that the last time we talked about the issues, we, we did talk about pedestrian tra and traffic safety as being primary concerns. So I'm, I really appreciate uh, Mr. Weber providing that as one of the, f the focuses of this report and, and decision making. So thank you. And I appreciate that the public came forward tonight as well to enlighten us because you really don't know unless you're standing there or living there or spending time there um, how challenging it is. But I happen to you know go by quite often and it, it's, it's definitely a challenging area now. Thank you. Councillor Green, go ahead, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and I do look forward to um, to finding a, a ways of uh, through uh, through various placemaking um, con uh, concepts or other ways of making this whole uh, downtown core much more inviting and much more uh, uh, pedestrian friendly, much more much more fun. Uh, and finding ways to, 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 to have the food aspect. I do note that uh, the Oak Bay does own a couple of properties uh, in the area with respect to those two, two buildings. Um, uh, I, I would imagine with some of the ideas that could be generated from this in terms of uh, some of the uh, possible placemaking added, uh, items added into it, um, in terms of patio expansion, maybe even food trucks could be added, uh, something to, to help uh, to, to liven up the place, although that might be another project that we might be slipping into. I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Thanks so much, Mayor. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, th th for the most part, the patios have worked out really, really well for us uh, throughout the pandemic. And it's, it, in certain areas, it's really added a lot to the ambience of, of our neighborhood. And um, and it's really been um, wonderful to be able to sit outside and eat and, and say hello to your friends, etc. There are, however, locations that perhaps it isn't um, feasible. Um, but I would note that I believe that this particular restaurant actually has a parking lot in the back. Do they not? Not. And so we can maybe look at, um, when we're looking at this um, study or whatever, um, we should perhaps look at those possibilities as well. So it maybe takes it from the front of the street and it, it with some with some help could be put in the, back of, in the back of the building or something like that. So I just would like to make sure that that's looked at as well. Thank you. Uh, just want to make sure you made note of that, uh, Mr. Weber, as you're going through the conversations with the, with the consultant, if this moves forward. Um, Yes, you're there. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I, I got that. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion on the motion in front of us? All right. I, I'm supportive of this motion. I think we do need to move from the from the temporary to the permanent, and we need to do it as expeditiously as possible. Um, I do note that in this, uh, I, I thought the comment was a good one about the fact that the police see the the impacts and they are allowed to say something. Although you know, so they are listed in our list of stakeholders for consultation. Uh, and so I think that's an important piece of it because they, they do see the impacts of some of these and they do have some of the uh, impacts of sort of behavioral management. And we heard about the, the sort of environmental approach to crime prevention and there's the equivalent for, uh, for traffic and, and, and mitigation pieces as well. So, um, so that is in here and that gives me some, some comfort as well. Um, any other discussion before I call the question on the motion? I don't see any, so I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed, so that'll go forward. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Weber, for that. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome to stick around if you wish, but it's a beautiful evening out there. You want to go over to the to the patio? And <laughs> All right. Thank you, Worship. Yeah. I might just do that. Have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Weber. 
Uh, we are moving on now to item number uh, section seven. Uh, so this is seven point one is the first one, which is the McNeil Avenue traffic calming. Uh, we do have a number of people who have indicated they wish to address council on this. Uh, so we will go to those uh, members of the public uh, as we uh, after we uh, in a few minutes. Uh, I would encourage if you're watching uh, through the YouTube or other st streaming channels, you can call the one eight five five number now. Uh, enter the meeting ID, passcode, and uh, hit star nine. I, I'm going to remind people because it's often mistaken. Star nine, not pound nine, but star nine, uh, to raise your hand, and they will sh you will show up in our application. Uh, we will uh, procedurally here. We'll do an introduction from staff. We will take the opportunity for uh, members of the committee to uh, to get some clarification and and questions of staff, and then we will go to the public for questions or comments. Uh, and then we'll come back to uh, this table for a deliberation of next steps. So with that, I believe I have Mr. Rennick, uh, our uh, manager of engineering, who's going to be providing a, uh, a presentation and an overview of where we're at. And uh, welcome, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just having a very brief struggle uh, trying to get my slide deck up and running. So if you just bear with me for a quick second, please. We can, we can bear with you. I can run through my patter once more, which is just to ask people if they are watching, this is the time to hit uh, star nine or raise your hand within the app and uh, we will uh, get to you uh, in uh, when we get to the public input part, but it's better to have your hand raised for a few minutes and not being picked on or selected uh, than to come in late and miss the opportunity. So uh, please do that. And I just will point out we have both uh, Mr. Rennick, who's our manager of engineering, as well as Mr. Haran, who is our director of engineering and uh, services, um, to uh, here to answer questions and uh, uh, go through these uh, these matters in a bit more detail. How was our presentation piece working here, Mr. Rennick? Oh, it was working great right up until I started trying to screen share. <laughs> It looked like it was on the screen there briefly. Is it a presentation that other staff have? Can we share it through it? No. Okay. Ah, the joys of technology. So this is our second to last item on the agenda. So we do have some time to delve into it in some detail. Leave, I figured it out. Sorry, I just Excellent. had to force quit PowerPoint. I swear I'm good at technology. So with that, I will uh, just again introduce, this is Mr. Rennick, our Manager of Engineering Services, uh, who is here to present uh, the report. And uh, uh, then we'll get to, again, council questions, members of the public, and then back to this table for consideration of the options. Uh, welcome, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council and members of the community. And uh, I'm here tonight to speak about traffic calming options on McNeil Avenue. Just make sure that it works. It works. You know what I'm doing. So by way of introduction, uh, I just want to make a couple of notes on McNeil Avenue. So McNeil Avenue is identified in the 2014 official community plan as a collector. Now collector roads are kind of the intermediate roads of the road network. They move vehicles from the low volume roads, which we call the locals, and they get them to either their destinations or to higher volume roads, which we call arterials. Uh, McNeil Avenue was also designated in the official community plan as a commuter bike route. It is a route that's commonly used by cyclists, but at the moment it doesn't make any accommodations for cyclists in the road design. In 2021, we commissioned a traffic calming options analysis. Uh, the purpose of that report was to look at different ways to control driver speeds and also to examine the possibility of adding some cyclist accommodations. And the other thing that happened in 2021, uh, which one of the council members just alluded to, is that the city of Victoria added cycling facilities to Richardson Street. Um, and so that brought a dedicated east-west cycling lane basically to the boundary of Oak Bay at uh, the corner of McNeil Avenue and Falbay Road. So this is the existing road. 
Uh, it's about a kilometer and a half long, travels east-west from the municipal boundary to Newport Avenue. It's posted at 40 kilometers per hour, has two school zones. It has four-way stops at Foul Bay, Oliver, and Transit, has marked crosswalks at three of the intersections, and uh, the western portion of the road is used by BC Transit buses. Uh, they get on at Victoria, and then they head to Foul Bay Road. We've done some traffic monitoring on this road over the years um, from 2007 to 2019 and I've just got a quick summary slide showing what kinds of volumes and uh, those speeds that are shown on there are the 85th percentile speed which is a pretty commonly used measure in traffic engineering of kind of what's the speed that the overwhelming majority of drivers are doing. So. As you can see, it's regularly been measured above the 40 kilometer per hour speed limit. Uh, and then the other thing that we see from this figure is that the volumes on the west side of the road are around 4,000 vehicles per day, and they kind of decrease as you head east and more vehicles turn onto uh, the various side roads. There was another round of traffic monitoring that was done in 2021, and uh, that had similar results to what the district had observed. Again, you're just kind of around that 4,000 vehicles per day range on the west side. Uh, in this case, all three locations, you can't see the third one because it's behind the Zoom panel. Um, all three of the locations had 85th percentile speeds in excess of 40 kilometers per hour. Um, and I note that the one in the middle between Monterey and Hampshire, that's in a school zone and it was monitored during a school day. Uh, this is an excerpt from the 2022 CRD regional cycling map and uh, it identifies McNeil as a shared street. So the legend on there is really kind of small, but uh, what it says is that a shared street may include traffic calming, signs, lower vehicle volume, or municipal designation. But in the case of McNeil, it doesn't actually include any of those things. Um, so it's identified on there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's perfect. Sorry, that one wasn't on my end. Um, so, sorry, as I was saying, it's uh, shown on the map as a shared street, but there's no traffic calming, no signs, no municipal designation. So it's kind of just on that map as uh, telling people that, hey, you're not going to be the first cyclist who's ever ridden on this road, but uh, that's about it as far as cycling accommodation goes. However, in the 2014 official community plan, McNeil Avenue was designated as part of the active transportation network, specifically as a commuter bike route. So at the time of the 2014 official community plan, uh, there was a desire on the part of the community to allow commuter cyclists to use McNeil Ave to get basically to the city of Victoria and to connect to the neighborhood bike routes on Newport and on Monterey. In 2021, the district commissioned the McNeil Avenue Traffic Calming Review Report, which was attached to this item on the agenda. And uh, what the few key questions were in the report were, are people obeying the posted speed limits? And if not, what can we do to control driver speeds? Um, is the current on-street parking adequate for the community's needs? And what can we do to accommodate cyclists within this corridor? So when the report was commissioned, staff provided a few limitations to the consultant, um, which I've listed up here. And I'll just kind of briefly touch on those limitations and why those were chosen. So. Preserving McNeil Avenue's status as a collector and maintaining the commuter bike designation for McNeil, uh, that was to be consistent with the official community plan. Maintaining the 40 kilometer per hour speed limit and following the TAC warrant procedure was to be consistent with council direction from the 2016 Oak Bay Speed Study. And uh, we also asked them to maintain the existing road width because 
widening the road to accommodate more bike lanes or to fit more things between the two curves would make this a much more expensive project than the district could deliver on uh, with current funding levels. And so because the staff provided the consultant with this certain set of limitations, that did control what potential options uh, the consultant came up with. So the council could direct us to change one of these limitations, and that would result in potentially different options. But uh, I do caution that that might have broader implications on the rest of the road network that we don't know of at this time. You know, for example, if we were to really make changes to McNeil Avenue that make it unattractive for vehicles, um, is that going to result in heavier traffic on Central or on Windsor? Um, we don't really know at this point in time, so just wanted to kind of make that, that uh, caveat. Uh, so now we're getting into the concepts that were presented by the consultants. So they split the roadway into two different sections, uh, east of Victoria and west of Victoria. And that's because we noted uh, off the top that the vehicle volumes are much higher on the west side of Victoria. So this is the first section. This is east of Victoria and uh, it goes about as far as Transit Road. Concept one includes raised crosswalks at two of the locations, at Victoria and at Monterey. Uh, curb extensions at Oliver and mid-block traffic calming curbs in uh, about four different locations. Their raised crosswalk treatment is something that's being used right now in District of Saanich, and there actually is one in Oak Bay on Gordon Head Road that was recently installed on our behalf by District of Saanich. So all of these treatments have the effect of slowing drivers down because they either narrow the roadway or in the case of the raised crosswalks, they basically behave like large speed bumps. Uh, concept two for East of Victoria is very similar to concept one, but rather than the raised crosswalks, it uses the curb extension treatment at Victoria, Monterey, and uh, Oliver. So this was noted as the preferred concept in the staff report because it's a little bit more cost effective than the raised crosswalk treatment and uh, it also shortens the crossing distance. So if you're a pedestrian who's trying to cross the road at the curb extensions, you spend less time physically walking on the roadway, you spend more time on the sidewalk. Uh, but fundamentally concept one and concept two are pretty similar. Uh, really they only differ on the do you want to do the raised crosswalks or do you want to do the curb extensions? It's where we go west of Victoria that the concepts are quite a bit different than the existing conditions. So concept A, uh, this is a 1.7 meter wide painted bike lane going up the hill, so heading westbound towards the city of Victoria, and a 3.35 meter wide uh, Shero lane coming down the hill. So there's not enough room on this road to allow a dedicated bike lane and Shero's and parking. So the implication of this one is that there would be no on-street parking at all between Foul Bay Road and uh, the east side of Victoria Avenue. And so it's it's a little tricky to see but uh, Victoria Avenue is split. The northbound section is on the west and the southbound section is on the east and the zone of no parking would be all the way to the southbound section on the east um, because that's where the bike lane would need to start. We could theoretically massage that in the detailed design but that is what was presented by the consultant. Uh, concept B delivers shared bike lanes for each direction. So rather than the current design where vehicles can park on either side of the road, this would cut it down so that the parking is only on one side of the road. One of the primary issues that's been identified when we spoke with residents is that when two cars meet each other and there's cars parked, either somebody's got to cross the center line or sometimes they don't and sometimes they sideswipe parked cars. And we've heard a lot of stories of damaged side mirrors and damaged side panels so in both concept A and concept B, we've made the lanes wider, so there's no need for anyone to cross the center line. Um, in option B, the parked cars would have a little bit of extra protection. There's a little bit more room so that in that 3.35 meters, somebody can have 
center line on their left, parked car on their right, and there's plenty of room for their vehicle. So this doesn't provide the level of cyclist accommodation that concept A provides, uh, but it does maintain some parking spaces. So that's, uh, that's concept B. So as you've seen in the correspondence package, and I know that there's some members of the public who uh, have asked to speak tonight on this matter as well, uh, we reached out to the community to hear what their thoughts were on what was being proposed. We did hear a lot of concerns about what we had proposed. Uh, you know, will this actually slow traffic down? Where will vehicles park if not on McNeil? And uh, we also had some suggestions for alternatives like uh, you could do speed bumps, you could have some more four-way stops, lower the speed limit, uh, et cetera. And so I just wanted to restate that we did provide a certain set of limitations to the consultant and the options that they provided were based on those limitations that were provided to them. And uh, council can, of course, provide alternative direction that might result in uh, a different set of options. Um, so I'd like to thank you for your time and uh, I'm now happy to take your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Reddick. I'd like that you finish with that welcome to Oak Bay sign on McNeil there. Um, so I'll take questions from council. Again, uh, people who wish to speak, I do have uh, people who had already indicated they wish to speak and I have that list and I have people raising their hands in the app. Uh, go to the public. Go ahead, Councillor Green, and then Councillor Patterson. Thank you very much, and through you to to Mr. Renning, thank you very much for a very complete, comprehensive report and the presentation. I happen to live in this area, and so um, the last 10 years there have been uh, a number of changes, and it is some of what you observe is, is absolutely correct. I, I just wondered, um, just a question. Um, you, you did consult, and I see that you consulted... Um, neighbors uh, west and then uh, east, but you didn't go very far on the eastern side. My understanding is, and, and from living in the area and from talking to neighbors on McNeil, the really critical area is from Fall Bay Road to Oliver. So I was just curious as to why um, Oliver, Oliver neighbors, uh, McNeil to, sorry, that neighbors down to as far as Oliver might not have been consulted, and, uh, and thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Renick. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you, uh, when the staff, um, when myself and Director Haran came up with the consultation plan, we felt that really the, the complicated area was the, the west area, where you're looking at potentially removal of all the on-street parking spaces, we felt that that was the area that was going to be the most heavily affected. And uh, we wanted to keep the correspondence to uh, a manageable level. Um, at the final tally, I believe we had 45 different pieces of correspondence that the engineering department received. We really struggled with what is the target for the community consultation because Frankly, it's not just the people who live on the street that would be affected. There's also, there's all kinds of potential stakeholders who, you know, anyone who lives in that neighborhood and rides their bike. And so we, do we go big? Do we go small? We, we settled on the area that was most directly affected by the largest changes, which was basically Victoria West. Okay, Great. thank you. Okay. Uh, they have Councillor Patterson, then Appleton, then Breathwaite. Yes, thank you, Mayor, and through you to Mr. Rennick. Um, thank you for the report and also for the clarifications on um, on the limitations that were placed on the consultants to determine the outcome of the report because I think that's really you know Im important to understand that that there were parameters set to it and with those parameters this is this is what they came up with. It was very um, uh, very disappointing to read in the report that, in fact, um, more recently, uh, speeds have increased <laughs> in the area um, and not, not, not diminished, and particularly where there's school zone signs. It's, it, it's really disappointing to have those um, indicators ignored by, by drivers. And, um, but to that end, we, there was a lot of um, questions in the letters, the correspondence from 
from residents in the area about uh, lack of enforcement of some of those regulations. Is there any information to inform uh, the document about uh, perhaps fines that are issued, uh, traffic stops that are issued um, in response to some of those concerns that have been raised by residents in their correspondence? Go ahead, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to the Council. The traffic engineer view tends to be that road speeds are set according to how drivers feel comfortable because when you do an enforcement blitz, you do tend to get limited success that it works as long as the police are there. And, uh, you know, I cannot speak to where Oak Bay Police chooses to deploy their officers, but what we're looking at is solutions that will make it so that we don't have to rely on issuing speeding tickets, but we actually narrow the road and make drivers comply with the speed limits. So it's a bit less of the a bit less of the hammer. I was about to say carrot, but it's not really a carrot. It's it's more about modifying driver behavior than it is about um, that, you know having them be concerned about police enforcement. Go ahead, Councillor Patterson. Thank you. And just if I I can continue, uh, since the city of Victoria has in fact the other side of Fall Bay Road made this a um, a cycling transportation corridor, um, ha has it been monitored and uh, like how how successful has that been on their side as an indicator to um, how that might be carry forward and inform our decision and what is before us tonight. Go ahead, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have not received any cycling count data from the City of Victoria um, as to how many more people are using the cycling lanes on Richardson now that they've made the changes. Uh, but that is information that if Council would like it, I could reach out to my counterparts in Victoria. Thank you, Councillor uh, Patterson. I have Councillor Appleton, then Braithwaite. No, thank you, Worship, and, and through you to staff. I, I, I want to thank staff for the comprehensive analysis and, and, and obviously eagerly anticipated, uh, and, and the community's been watching this for some time, and I, and I just want to acknowledge uh, the amount of, of correspondence and the, and the detail in the correspondence that the public's provided on this, and it reflects their interest and, and the significance that they place on this. So uh, Council will note the detail that's provided and, and in fact some quite detailed analysis in a lot of that correspondence. And I just, so just through you, Your Worship, to staff, I just want to comment or just wanted to uh, ask with respect to a shared street design, as, as we've noted, there's not enough width in a practical sense to create separated infrastructure on McNeil. So in the same sense as the design that's been adopted on Richardson on the Victoria side with a shared street design, is it, is it fair to say that the objective with a shared street that's going to be shared by different modes of transportation that overall the, there's a tenet to uh, increase safety by reducing speeds and reducing, re, re, by reducing automobile speeds? Is that, is that fair to say? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, that, that is the intent. Mm -hmm. So, if I may continue, Your Worship, uh, just as a, as a follow-up, are there any uh, limitations to extending the design of Concept One, which includes raised crosswalks and and sp speed control features, if you want to call it that? Uh, are there any? What are the constraints to extending that treatment beyond the zone east of Victoria? and also have that extend through the uh, portion to Fowl Bay Road. Mr. Rennick? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to the Council. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't see there necessarily being a disadvantage to, to looking into providing that same treatment. Uh, the only thing that I could think of off the top of my head is that we would need to check the turning radiuses for the transit buses because mm -hmm. they need a little bit more maneuverability, but I don't see that as being uh, a major obstacle. Thank you, Worship, um, and appreciate that. Um, and just. With, with respect to, and, and I guess it pertains to the design and the turning radius piece, was there any, and I, it, it just may not have been considered by the consultant, but 
many of the residents that I've spoken to have, have noted that obviously the the uh, elevation change from the intersection at Fowl Bay and McNeil as you go eastbound, uh, there's a you obviously go down a hill, uh, and they've noted that there could potentially, whether or not there was an option for a redesign of the area immediately ad adjacent to the intersection, such that it would limit uh, speeds for people turning onto, turning from northbound Fowl Bay onto McNeil. Uh, and just basically slowing down that traffic pattern. There's a bus stop up at the very end there that, that's op obviously open because it doesn't have any parking in it, so there's not any vehicles. So is there, a, and I don't want to put staff on the spot, but is there a design option for in the immediate vicinity of the intersection that might also slow traffic inbound into Oak Bay? Go ahead, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor. One thing that I learned recently is that the entire intersection of McNeil and Fowl Bay it is completely in City of Victoria. The municipal boundary is actually kind of on the sidewalk once you get a little bit past that location. So that is one thing that we would have to look into is that it may not be our jurisdiction to make changes immediately at that intersection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Worship. Appreciate the indulgence. Um, one of the questions that I've heard um, repeatedly is is the is the issues around traffic negotiating this as as Mr. Rennick alluded to the negotiating the center line uh, on McNeil as it exists as the, there's the there's the center line from Fowl Bay which then disappears um, that the center line may itself present a problem as drivers attempt to adhere to the center line and then get too close to the parked cars and have these, these these incidents. So what is the, I think in concept B, uh, there's still the idea of retaining the center line. Uh, I'm just wondering, is there a possibility of the detailed design stage of contemplating eliminating the center line, as has been done through most of the Richardson corridor, in order to sort of in for, in, enhance that shared space type of idea and avoid those those conflicts of vehicles up close to uh, you know adjacent parked vehicles, which haven't been deleted on on Richardson. So uh, many residents have have commented on the need to eliminate the center line in that section. I was wondering whether staff could comment on that. Go ahead, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, uh, the possibility of eliminating the center line is some, certainly something that could be considered at detailed design time. Thank you, Worship. I'll just yield the floor. Uh, thank you. I, I'm, before I go to Councilor Brief, I just want to get some get one piece of clarification on that. The, the, the shared center line uh, and the loss thereof, my understanding of the, um, of the Richardson side of the equation was they, they needed to get this, the number of vehicles down to sort of 500 a day or below to make that. Was that a center line issue? Or was that the, the broader design contemplation? What, what, is it, what triggers that, that sort of design change? Just... What really got the volumes down on Richardson is that you basically can't drive a car on it for more than about two blocks. Uh, you're forced to turn at Richmond, again at St. Charles, again at, I think, Moss. So I don't, I don't think it was the elimination of the center line. I think it was forcing cars to turn that got their vehicle volumes down. No, I appreciate that. Sorry, I, I was suggesting that the, um, you know, that was part of the design requirement was to have those sort of lower volumes to make the design work. They couldn't do a kind of a Shero, no center line. So I'm curious if that no center line was a, is it, does that require lower traffic volumes or can a collector road exist safely without a center line? Uh, generally speaking. Uh, that gets a little bit beyond my expertise to really comment on. I think on. Councillor Alton said detailed design stage. I'm happy to leave it there if that's the contemplation. So thank you. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Brithwaite. Thank you so much. And through you, Chair, to, to Mr. Rennick. Um, thanks, Mr. Rennick, for your report. Um, I, I, I think Councillor Appleton may have answered one of my questions because my question was raised crosswalks. And so I'm assuming that that's like a, a very long, elongated speed bump, but with a crosswalk in it. Go ahead, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Sorry, I'm not used to being here in person. I'm like, no, you can't just nod. You have to say it on the record. Yes, a raised crosswalk is essentially uh, a wide speed bump that uh, that people can walk across. Thank you. So in essence, that, all, that acts as a, 
a, a deterrent or a, a, a something that slows traffic down automatically. Uh, yes, that is correct. Um, and if I may, Chair. Um, then my other question was, within the report, uh, I, saw, I noticed that there was something called a shared drive lane. And I'm thinking that a shared drive lane must mean a lane for only one vehicle to be able to um, to proceed on, similar to what they've done at Humboldt, where you have to play chicken to go down that street if you're in a car. Is, is that what a shared drive lane means? Mr. Rennick? I would not quite characterize it as the same as Humboldt. Uh, but it does have a similar effect to a lot of roads in Oak Bay, for instance, Hampshire, where if there's somebody coming the other way, one of you is going to have to pull over. Go ahead, Councilor Brithy. Um, thank you. And then um, my question was, in the report um, that's attached to your report, um, was the Richardson block, the Richardson block um, for City of Victoria, in place when that traffic count was done? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, no, that was prior to the implementation of the closure at Richardson. I thank you, and I, I just wonder if that makes a difference. It, it, it would just be a question, and whether or not that would cause us to want to have a different report done, because um, we might see a difference now in the number of vehicles that travel there, because now they're going to different streets. So. In my head, I kind of go, wow, is that something we should do first before we make any decision on what we're basing um, uh, the, the, our decision on tonight, which would be the report that's attached to your to your, um, to your your report? I don't think there was a question, just a really comment. No, it's okay. Go ahead. And then my, my last question, thank you through you, Mayor, is um, uh, it was. Oh, um, when they do a traffic count, do they ever do a bicycle count at the same time on on a road like that? Like, because I know that they said number of, number of you know vehicles this number, of, but they I didn't see anything as to a number of bicycles. Mr. Renick. Uh, thank you. I was looking into that question because there's lots of different kinds of counters. Uh, City of Victoria has a specific kind of counter that can tell what sort of vehicle is being counted. Uh, unfortunately, the consultant was just using uh, just your basic tube counter, so a vehicle is a vehicle, whether it's a, a bike or a bus or a car. Thank you. Is there any other questions of Mr. Rennick before I go to the public? Go ahead, Councillor Zelko. Uh, thank you very much. I do have a couple of questions, uh, and I appreciate the, the presentation. I, um, this is... Uh, a subject near and dear to my heart, so I appreciate being able to talk about this stuff. Uh, the, um, the 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 TAC warrant procedure and the whole the whole TAC design process. I note uh, the history of the TAC uh, design road process goes all the way back to 1914. So there's definitely a lot of history uh, here and a lot of um, uh, of uh, innate uh, uh, design uh, knowledge that we need to sort of obviously respect. But there are sort of hopefully new ways of of looking at things um, uh, and. Uh, there's also other countries that have other other ways of dealing with intersections and traffic calming that I'm hoping we can possibly, certainly as part of the public engagement, consider uh, further ideas. Um, let me start with some of the questions. Um, with respect, one of them had to do with jurisdiction. I do note from Fal, uh, Fal Bay Road is full, I agree with you is fully within Victoria, and I I, I, I was able to pull the uh, the um, bylaw on that uh, intersection. Uh, it's not ours. So um, uh, with respect to any map of Oak Bay, there's a section there that's not ours. That would be interesting to see what what we can and cannot do with that piece. Um, but uh, I'm sure Victoria would like to see something done there. Um, so yeah, I'd be looking forward to, forward to seeing what, what happens there. Um, uh, at one point, McNeil was designated an emergency evacuation uh, evacuation uh, route or route until uh, before the road was blocked off uh, back in 2021. Um, uh, I w would hope that uh, the whole emergency evacuation uh, route process will be factored into whatever we do here, um, so that uh, obviously. Uh, if we have to get out fast for, for whatever reason, that uh, whatever we build is not uh, going to going to impact that, and in, in an, any more than it already has been negatively impacted. Um, just for the record, the staff did nod that that was that was happening. Just excellent, and I and I do note that there is some sort of a process with respect to the Oak Bay Emergency Program, uh, having to possibly redo some reports in that area. Um, the speed limit proposal. Um, uh, that uh, was submitted to the province to 
change the, the, uh, the default speed limit to 30 kilometers an hour for any road that does not have a center line. I believe that project was put in with Saanich and Victoria to the province uh, about a year or two ago. Uh, a quick question through you, Chair, to staff. Um, have we heard what the status is of that project? And uh, let me just start with that. I can answer that question probably better. Um, so the generally speaking, the province was uh, had verbally indicated prior to that application that they would likely be supportive of 40 kilometers an hour as a default. When the ask was changed to 30, it sounds like that's been a, given a no-go. That's mm. not going to be happening. Mm. Uh, so then it sounds like uh, the ball's back in our court for needing to do something our, ourselves, which is, uh, which is too bad. Um, I do uh, also want, wish to support Councillor Braithwaite on the concern around uh, whether it still is 4,000 cars per day on that uh, western portion of McNeil uh, to Victoria uh, as a result of the road closures at, at Richardson. I would wonder whether those numbers are now less. I'm, I'm sure they're still higher than the, than the eastern portion with respect to the cars uh, heading over to St. Michael's University School, Junior School. Um, but I still would love to know what that number is uh, today. And I do appreciate uh, you also um, uh, making it uh, clear that while the speed limits are in excess of the, the posted speed limits, they're in excess by less than 10% uh, of the posted speed limit. Most of the police that I've encountered over the years, and Oak Bay police may be different, but if you're less than 10% over the limit, generally the police leave you alone. But um, Oak Bay, as I say, police may be different in that respect. Um, so I think that's it for questions for now. I'll um, yield for now, but you have more uh, more discussion later. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We uh, generally. I apologize. Just one more thing. Okay. I'm sorry. There, I just last minute. I did one more thing. You did point out that uh, with respect to level uh, crosswalks, you you pointed out the, the Gordon Head uh, Road in Oak Bay has the level crosswalk, and uh, one or two others, Humboldt Street at St. Anne also has a, a, a very, very excellent uh, a level crosswalk where there is no change to the level of the sidewalk as you cross the road and effectively it is like a very long speed bump and the cars must slow down as a result of that. So I do note that uh, this, this, uh, this level crosswalk concept is slowly making its way throughout uh, the uh, COD area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zelka. Um, so the only question I have for staff before I go to the public and appreciate the patience of members of the public here um, is just the uh, the question of cost because obviously we are quite constrained as uh, was noted here by the uh, the existing width of that road which well labeled a collector is not sort of built as a as a collector road uh, certainly not with with parking and everything else attached to it so uh, there's an estimate here of around $100,000, give or take, for that sort of ballpark, at least for sort of the, the kind of changes that we're contemplating within the report. Um, there are, you know, obviously potentially other things we could do, such as widening the road or uh, moving all of the hydro poles and some of the trees across, out. I'm just, is there any sort of sense of what, what changes those, like either curb changes or, or other? Is that going from 100,000 to a million, 100,000 to 10 million, 100,000 to 150,000? Do we have any sort of sense of if we wanted to explore those options, what that, anything in terms of the, I'm not asking for any commitment here, just some sense of where those costs might, might look like, Mr. Rennick? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, it really depends on which section we're looking at, how far are we going. Just in the Foul Bay to Victoria, we could be looking in the Four to five to six hundred thousand dollar range by the time we're moving hydro poles, moving uh, uh, street lights, redoing people's driveways, redoing all the curb gutter and sidewalk. Uh, it would very much increase the complexity of the project. A clarification, uh, and I guess uh, I'll just uh, make a note on this one as well. Um, First of all, thank you for the report. It's very helpful to have this. Um, you know, I guess my contemplation at this table on this is, you know, it's a bit sobering when you put up the the, the, the screen there of, of all of the area, the, the cycling designated uh, routes in Oak Bay and how very little infrastructure we have on any of them. And, uh, you know, I guess that's probably part of the philosophical question that we're going to have to look at here is we've, we've, we've put a substantial amount of money uh, more into the actual transportation pipeline that we have to spend, but there's still obviously a, a lot of work to do. So the question I think is going to come down a lot of ways to whether or not we're we're prioritizing one corridor 
uh, and doing spending more money on that, or are we sort of spreading that out and making everything a little bit better? And those are questions I don't know if I have a an easy answer to. Um, I don't know, Mr. Renick, if you have any comment on that, but I'm, otherwise I'll go to the public. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just a just a quick comment on that. So staff is has in the past and is continuing to to be nimble and to deliver on these projects uh, in a way that is the most cost effective. Um, you know, I wasn't here when the Cadbro Bay Road bike lanes were done, but Director Haran and I were discussing it earlier today, and there was not a lot of curb and sidewalk that was relocated. Uh, and so that was a project that was delivered uh, very cost effectively, I would say. And so that was also kind of the spirit of this report is that we're looking at ways to really deliver as, as much as possible um, for the community. And so I, I certainly take your point about how do you balance uh, being nimble versus maybe that increased investment in a specific area. Thank you for that comment. I think it's helpful to understand the philosophical guidance that, that guides some of these these reports. So thank you for that. Um, we do have a number of speakers who do want to address council. I also would like to point out for the speakers who have written, um, it's probably worthwhile just to uh, um, just make note of the fact that if you've written a letter as well, so that, that we will have read all of those uh, correspondence. So the first one I think is, uh, is you, Ms. Starkweather. Yes. All right, so we have three people in person, uh, two people registered remotely, and then I'll go to anybody else who has their hand raised. Uh, so welcome, uh, Ms. Starkweather. You heard the, the process. If you could just state your name uh, for the record, it's just a municipality of residence. You don't have to give your home address. Hi, I'm Sarah Starkweather. I live in Oak Bay um, on Victoria Avenue, actually. Um, so I drive and I bike and I walk on McNeil. In fact, I think I did all three of those just today. Um, so thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm really appreciative that traffic calming is being discussed in this way, and I'm appreciative of the, of the staff work on this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the first thing I want to emphasize, and I did, I did write a letter that I sent to Council and Engineering today. I strongly support traffic calming on McNeil. I think. Um, there's daily experiences of drivers speeding, drivers swerving over the center road that make it a lot more stressful to use, whether I'm driving or biking or walking. Um, so it's, as I said, it's great to see this discussion of how design can curb the behaviors. And I think that only design can curb it. You can't just change a speed limit. You need to redesign to change this behavior. Um, I think I'm so excited about this because is because uh, it's really important to me that streets are seen as belonging to all of us, no matter what mode of transportation we're using in the moment. It's not that the people who are most in a hurry are the most important on that street, right? Um, the second thing I wanna emphasize is that this redesign gives us a good opportunity to really think about how to redesign for the most vulnerable users, the people who are not, um, who are not in a car, basically. So, it's important here because it's a route to school for many kids going to Margaret Jenkins, going to Monterey, going um, to the other junior school that is south of McNeil. Um, it's also, whether you like it or not, it's now a bike connector to the rest of Victoria. That's how we get to do errands and, and entertainment downtown now. Um, so the reason I'm talking about this is that I'm a little concerned that some of the aspects of the proposed design might make things a little bit worse for us on McNeil. So I love that we're talking about bike accommodations, but in the, in the, in the detailed design, some things to think about. Um, first, for pedestrians, I don't love the idea that the fact that drivers aren't obeying the, the speed limits in the school zones would mean that we remove the school zone signage, right? I think that it's smarter to use design to slow cars down, maintain those school zones, which are important crossings for lots of kids. Um, and then for bikes, which is, for my family, the most important thing, um, we do at least two school runs a day on that road. Um, so one issue in design is the mid-block curbs, the extended crosswalks. Um, it's gonna be making us weave in and out of traffic, which if it's going at 40K an hour, isn't a very comfortable experience. So I would like that, that to be considered in the detailed design. Um, second, 
I'm a bit of two minds about the proposed bike lane in Concept A. Um, it's nice to see, but if it's just a painted lane, what you're going to do is you're going to create conflict at, the, at that stop sign. So you might be familiar with the idea of the right hook. We're going to be biking up the hill, cars are going to zip past, and they're going to want to turn right. So that, that point of conflict is hard to resolve if you're just in an open lane. Um, so as I say, it's important to me that whatever design is, implement doesn't, is implemented doesn't create new points of conflict for us. So with that said, with respect to these designs, um, I would support concept one, the raised crosswalks as being more effective in actually slowing people down and, and not having that effect of pushing us out into traffic. Um, concept A, if, if there can be some protection or some design solution to that right hook, that would be great. If not, then I think it's not going to improve the situation for us. Um, as we're biking through the neighborhood. So that's, that's the, the gist of one and what I wanted to convey. I really appreciate you considering these questions as deeply as you are. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Starkweather, for your attending here tonight. We have, um, I'm not sure who is speaking or one or both, but we have uh, Allison Flock and Dan Wong, uh, I think in attendance as well. We do. Welcome. You can. Oh, your your microphone is not on. If you could just uh, push the button. Uh oh, we may have run out of battery. Is it the middle battery? Oh, there we oh, go. There it goes. On. No. So if you just state your name and municipality of residence for the record, and uh, and welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council, for the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, my name is Dan Wong, and my family and I have lived on the 2100 block of McNeil Avenue in Oak Bay for over a decade. Uh, we are very glad to see the issue of McNeil Avenue traffic calming and corridor improvements coming before committee today. This is an important step in moving the district forward to meet its strategic goals for active transportation, complete streets, and enhancing and promoting quality of life and sense of place. It is the right thing to do. Having said that, we hope that you have had an opportunity to read our written correspondence addressing this agenda item. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak in person this evening as well, because we um, strongly dis disagree with the recommendation in the staff report. In particular, we disagree with the recommendation that concept A be considered for the westernmost stretch of McNeil Avenue from Fowl Bay to Victoria, based on three main issues that would be made worse by concept A. The first is vehicle speed. By removing all physical and visual barriers currently due to parked cars, this would create nearly a 30-foot wide runway for two to three blocks on a hill, and vehicle speed would undoubtedly increase, not decrease. The second is cycling and pedestrian safety. With no proposed intersection improvement, such as traffic control curbs at Falkland and Runnymede, and only a painted single bike lane with no protected bike infrastructure, overall safety uh, would be reduced in this section. And then third is parking. Removing all parking on both sides uh, goes against the consultant's recommendation in their report. It would force residents, their guests, trades, people, and deliveries to find parking on adjacent streets. We and our neighbors have advocated for many years for improvements to McNeil Avenue to manage vehicular traffic and to make the street a safe, active transportation route for all road users, in particular for local residents, pedestrians, and cyclists. We're disappointed at the process by which this has come forward to committee. After many years, we did receive a letter at the end of May from engineering regarding this proposal. It was cursory at best and neglected to include the crucial information on which we have now relied to formulate our requested feedback. Having only had an opportunity to read the actual staff report and contents of the Watt Consulting Group report on Thursday of last week, uh, we and many of our neighbors have scrambled to provide input relative to the new information. In particular, we were surprised to learn that the scope of the Watt report actually included the entire length of McNeil Avenue from Falby Road to Newport, and that different recommendations are being made for different sections of what is little more than one kilometer stretch of road. We note that staff is recommending concept two for the stretch of McNeil East of Victoria Avenue. For the myriad of reasons outlined in our written correspondence, many of which have also been raised by other residents, our personal opinion and professional opinion is that detailed design should proceed on the basis of either concept one or two for the entire length of McNeil Avenue. 
The arguments for dividing McNeil Avenue into an eastern and a western end are unnecessary and refutable. A detailed design based on concept one or two is the best solution proposed in the report and takes into account all road users and moves the district forward with its strategic priorities and active transportation plan goals in mind. It will create a safe, connected, and easily navigable east-west active transportation route all the way from Windsor Park and the Oak Bay Marina all the way to downtown Victoria. It is the only option described that preserves some on-street parking along McNeil and also provides the necessary traffic calming to slow vehicles and make it a safe route for vulnerable road users. That said, if it were only a choice between concept A and concept B for the western section, the only option in our opinion would be to proceed with concept B as outlined in the Watt report that at least retains some parking and provides a small amount of additional calming. While we certainly take issue with the consultation process and response time of only four days, we would certainly not want to see the McNeil Avenue to Complete Streets Initiative delayed much longer as this has been an ongoing and increasingly frustrating issue for many years. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Wong. And just for the record, for everybody understands, we all get the same information at the same time on these reports, so it comes to Council and the public at the same time. Uh, and obviously, we, uh, this is the venue here at the public, uh, for the Committee of the Whole, for us to get the, the broader public engagement on this. So I appreciate you coming in here today to share your, your thoughts. Uh, we are moving on here to, uh, I have uh, Klippenstein and Petri, or Petri, if we could have them come in. Is this still on? The red light's on. It so is I'm still on, it and you're, uh, <laughs> you can just state your name and municipality of residence, and uh, we will... Uh, Kevin Klippenstein from uh, Oak Bay, and I'm in the 20 hundred block, just a block up, in the block immediately um, between Runnymede and Fowl Bay, so this has a pretty big impact on on our residents. Um, Asa can't, she's not feeling well, so she can't be here tonight, unfortunately. Um, so I'll speak on her behalf since we're partners. I'm sure she'll agree to that. Um, I'll try not to. I've, I've got some written notes here, and I'll, I'll try. Um, a lot of the stuff has been addressed by council, which I really appreci appreciate, and, and by the previous uh, speaker as well. So I'll try to be somewhat brief, but I would like to raise a couple of things. Um, we were... We were quite surprised that the recommendation was for A, because when you read through the information that we have, there's no talk about any kind of additional uh, traffic calming measures. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you go through the letter that we were provided from engineering a couple of weeks ago and the Watt report, they all talk about the residents complaining about their mirrors being hit. So. The answer to our mirrors being hit, and one of my frustrations, like I agree something needs to be done, my mirror's been hit three times, and the last time it was hit was the day I sent an email <laughs> addressing this. So I fully agree, it is an issue, it is absolutely an issue. But the response to having our mirrors hit and our concerns and other people's letters to council is to say, oh, you don't want your, ears, your, your mirrors hit? Well, fine, we won't allow parking on the street. It's a bizarre answer to that. It's just totally bizarre. And, and, um, and as, as, as A is written, it's, it's, there's no actual traffic calming for the first three blocks. It's simply giving, trying to give more space to the cyclists. I'm really concerned. Oh, I'm gonna be, we're gonna have to tandem park in our, bar, in our driveway, which means there'll be times we gotta back out onto the road or go onto the road and try to back in, and cars are gonna be moving even faster down there. They're not gonna be moving slower. They're gonna be moving faster because the perceived width is gonna be more. The actual road hasn't widened, but the perceived with which even the Watt report addresses if you if they perceive it safer to go faster they will go faster so my guess is, is if you go ahead with option a as it is you're going to see a 10 percent increase five to ten percent increase in traffic speeds right there and it's going to make it actually worse and more dangerous for us to get in and out of our driveways which brings me to the question well if it's if we need to do a with traffic calming then why don't we just try traffic calming to begin with and see if that does it, right? Two speed bumps, one one near the crest of, of uh, one near the crest of, of uh, the
the hill at, at McNeil and one three quarters of the way down would probably solve 70% of the issue, if not more. That's a simple thing like that would, would do it. I'm not opposed to B. I will support B. It's just that A is going too far. It'd be a huge inconvenience. We park every day on the street, and a lot of our neighbors park every day on the street. We're mid-block. I can't imagine in November rains or if it's this year, Jan June rains, <laughs> walking from Runnymead, and they're not going to want us parking on Runnymead either, walking from Runnymead half a block up to, you know, carrying groceries and, and briefcases and things like that every single day, or being forced to dangerously, in my mind, most likely, uh, tandem park on, on uh, out of our driveway, which I, th I think is not a safe situation. So I'd like also to... Um, just state a couple of things. I'm sure that you're going to go through all the correspondence as, 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 as well as you can, um, but there are a couple of things I'd like to point out in the Watts report. Um, for our portion of the block, um, even though in the, the letter we got from engineering said that there were at most 13 uh, parking stalls used in that section uh, regularly, and there are 70 spots. Well, first of all, there's not really 70 spots because that would mean there'd be two in front of our house, and we're very careful about our parking, so we allow two spots. If we're not first there, it's only one spot because people don't park like they do park downtown. So there's nowhere close to, in reality, 70 spots, unless you're gonna actually make little lines on the street or put in meters or something to designate the spots. It's, so that's not really realistic. Then um, we walk the street and of those 13 stalls, it sounds like it's really underutilized, 13 stalls for 70, but there's only 21 doors that face McNeil in that section of those three blocks or whatever it is, three, three and a half blocks. There's only 21 doors that face McNeil. So that means almost 70% of the people are regularly using that street parking who, are, who live off of McNeil. And so that's a pretty big impact. Then directly from the Watts report, and this kind of got sidetracked there, 55% um, on-street parking utilization on the south side from Fowl Bay to Runnymede. So that's like 55% is not an insignificant number. In fact, it brought it up from the green to the yellow mark if you look at that. The Watts report actually for this section recommends curb extensions and speed humps for this zone, which I've been waiting years to see something like that because I think that alone will do the, do the issue. Page 10, the removal, it actually states the removal of parking on both sides is not re recommended at this time. It actually states that in the Watts report. And then it also says addition of bike lanes on both sides of the road does not take up the same cross section width as parking and as such vehicles would feel more comfortable speeding with wider drive lanes. So right there in the Watts report, it's defending what a lot of the people are saying in the letters to you. It's actually going to increase traffic, or speeds of the traffic. Then um, it, rec it does recommend removing the center line, uh, which you, you guys have already discussed to some degree. And, it, and I, I understand that the council doesn't wish or they, they've directed engineering not to look at reducing the speed limit to 30, but I wonder if that's worth re-looking at for a couple of reasons. One is that the Watts report actually recommends that. Two, one of the complaints is people aren't going 30 in the 30 zones, which are further down to, towards where the schools are. Four, with the change of Richardson now being blocked off and you can't go there, when you get up to the top of, of McNeil, you can only go 30 kilometers an hour either way. So I think with, with what's changed to Richardson, that whole idea of 30 kilometers an hour has also per perhaps changed. And, and I, I really think that that's worth doing. But I do agree with, with the Watts report and what, what the engineering has said and what the pre previous speaker said. You can't do it with a speed sign. It doesn't work with just a speed sign. I agree with that 100%. But the speeds do need to come down. Um, so similar to the, to the previous speaker, um, you know, if, it's, if, if we can address this east of Victoria, we don't see a reason why those methods can't work west of Victoria and, and, and have
far, far less of an impact on us. Um, then the, there's also, if you look at the letters, I've actually done a tally, and I've tried to be really fair in this and not associate one with, with where it shouldn't be long, but the tally I came up with was 13 people in, for, in favor of A, 19 people in fa would prefer B, not very strongly not A is 10, neither, but by neither it was opposed to anything at all, was three, and one, there was one neutral. So that out of 46 letters that, that I could get from the website today, there's actually 32% against, pretty strongly against A. Um, so that's, you know, close to 70% of the letters are strongly against A. And then I would like to also, one last thing is I would like to reiterate what the, what the last uh, speaker said about the process. I too am frustrated with the process. Um, the, what came out from engineering in the letter to us said we welcome your comments, questions, and your clarifications on June, on June 8th, Wednesday, June 8th, so about a week and a half ago, I sent two emails. I purposely sent the first one, which was questions about procedure first, and then I sent the ones about my comments and analysis about it, so that I, so it wouldn't get confused in the two and I would get addressed. Neither one was addressed, neither one at all, but they were simple questions such as, will there be a public hearing if, if the Committee of the Whole advances it? If not, will there be any opportunity for the public to address in person to council? Three, will the comments received be summarized or actually passed along? Simple, simple questions. Would have taken five minutes of response. I didn't even get a bounce back on my email saying that, thank you for your comments, you know, will come back to you. There's no information about there, that there is a WhatsApp traffic report available. There is no information about when the community of, committee of the whole was meeting. It's a frustrating thing because we would like something done and we'd like to work with Oak Bay. We'd like to work with, with mayor and council. We'd like to work with engineering. We feel totally shut out here. We do not feel listened to. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you for that. And you know, certainly we will uh, take those comments. The uh, certainly the intention here is to make sure that we get that work, do work with our neighbors and, and community and, and those pieces. So that is the that's always the goal on this, and that's the reason this is such a, a, a public welcome sort of process. Is, and and the committee model supports that. So we'll do our best to, to make sure that we capture those communication comments. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want this off? Sure. We'll turn it off for the time being. Thank you. Uh, I now have uh, two members who have uh, indicated they were coming in remotely, and one was the uh, first one I have on my list is uh, Peter wrote oh in person. Okay. Welcome, sir. You just push, push the button and if you just state is. your name and municipality of residence. Yeah, and, I'm uh, Peter welcome. Robilliard. Uh, I live in Oak Bay on McNeil in the 2000 block. Um, I haven't done enough research into all this. Uh, I do recognize that speed's always been an issue on McNeil. I disagree with the report. I think the speeds are a lot higher than is posted. Uh, just my guess. Uh, once again, like the previous speaker, I've lost a few mirrors. I've, we've all have the same problems up and down the street. Um, my problem with the report is uh, I've parked on McNeil. I have cars every day. I have three people that drive in my house. We have vehicles. There's nowhere else to park them. Uh, I bought my house 15 years ago. We had parking. Uh, I'm not about to lose it. Uh, I will fight that right till the end. Um, there, I think there's a really easy solution to all this. Uh, the, the speed's a factor, a couple speed bumps. I don't know what this report costs to make, but I think there's a responsibility of, uh, you wanna be fiscally responsible? I think we should have just put some speed bumps down there right away. It would have been cheaper than the engineer's report, which I guess has gotta be a thousand bucks a page, if not more, I don't know what it cost. Um, so just as a taxpayer, um, I think we need to do more and just be a little more proactive than talking about it and writing reports where we could have solved the problem really quick. And 
Um, yeah, lots of schools down there, lots of kids. They need to be safe. They're, they're learning how to ride their bikes. Uh, we want them to be safe, but uh, I don't think widening the road's gonna help. It's gonna make things worse. Um, school time is really bad uh, for everybody. Uh, that's about uh, all I think we've had some speakers say a lot of things I'm thinking about already, so no sense in tripling up on it. And uh, I just, uh, I'm not really into much of a change. I think it can be solved s s a lot easier with some speed bumps because people have no choice but to slow down. Where hey, you post a speed sign, they don't care. They're going to do what they want. Uh, come sit on my doorstep at 7 in the morning and see how fast people really go down there. Or 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Sure, there's not a lot of pedestrian traffic, but uh, they're flying. So, uh if the speed sign says 30, they're still going to fly. You put a speed bump there, they're going to stop in a hurry. So uh, that's all I really have to say today. Thanks for your time, and um, we'll continue on. <laughs> thank you very much for coming out tonight. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have one more person in person here, okay? And then we'll go to people online. Sir. Evening. Evening. Uh, my name is James Morgan. I live on the south side of McNeil Avenue between Runnymede and Falkland, which is at the bottom of the hill leading east from Fowl Bay Road. I've lived at this location for 13 years, so I've experienced the high rate of speed that some vehicles reach by the time they pass my residence, especially when descending the hill. I also have been riding my bike to work for the past eight years. I received a letter from your engineering department regarding proposed changes to the McNeil Avenue corridor that are intended to bring the average driver's speed down to this posted 40 kilometers an hour and provide accommodations for cyclists. <clears throat> As requested in the letter, I provided my feedback regarding the proposed concepts by way of emailing the engineering department and mayor and council. When I sent this email, I was unaware of the 58 page report the engineering department had in their possession and were providing to mayor and council and that they planned on requesting the Mayor and Council approve proceeding with Concept A at tonight's meeting. This 58-page report provided to Council obviously contains a lot more valuable information than the two to three pages the residents who are going to be most affected by any changes were provided. Had it not been for some astute residents who noticed this information attached to tonight's meeting agenda, we would have not known about this until after the vote had taken place. I have to say that I feel the engineer department have gone about this in an underhanded manner. So I can't, we have not gone about an underhanded manner. This is a very standard process. So just keep the comments to the facts and don't just disparage the staff if you don't mind. I appreciate feedback on process, welcome, but that's, that's taking a shot at staff. I just don't want that to happen, so if you don't mind, okay, thank you. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Alice, okay, well I would say Alison and Dan, who just spoke, or have been consulting with the engineering department for approximately two years and have been communicating with the engineering department in a good faith and asking you know, what's going on, the scope of stuff, which obviously was known, and they weren't passing that info on, right? When they, anyway, we'll leave it at that. So my opinion is having reviewed, reviewed the concepts, the two concepts for the West End of McNeil Avenue presented by the engineering department, referred to as concept A and B, I do not support either proposal, as I do not think either uh, option would slow vehicles down. I actually believe these options would make matters worse by removing parked cars that currently dot both sides of McNeil Avenue, and they want to remove 100% with concept A and 70% with concept B. And parked cars do cause vehicles to slow down somewhat. Council are being asked to approve concept A tonight, which would remove 100% of parking, and instead, we would have wide open lanes for the east and westbound traffic, creating a raceway. So some issues that I read on the 58, I only got this report a couple of days ago, and I hear you, you did as well, but. Um, some issues, uh, vehicle speed and volume data was collected from three, three locations along McNeil Avenue for a one-week period in April. The data collection for the portion of McNeil Avenue that is going to be most affected, which is the west of Victoria Avenue, um, where they want to remove 100% parking, only worked for one of the seven days. So it only collected 14% of the data that was collected compared to the other locations. The report states that the average speed in the west, western portion of McNeil Avenue was 44 
kilometers an hour 85 percent of the time and 4400 vehicles passed on the one day collected so to me that says 15 percent of the vehicles were exceeding the 44 kilometer average and 15 percent of 4400 vehicles is close to 700 vehicles so 700 vehicles were speeding and i can having lived there for 13 years i can tell you that a lot of the vehicles are going closer to 60 and 70. the report states that in the report it says if a driver feels comfortable traveling at higher speed they generally will do so and staff is recommending changes to the roadway that will affect driver speed such as mid-block traffic calming islands and curb extensions that will bring most driver speed down to the 40 kilometer limit but none of these changes are recommended for the portion west of Victoria Avenue, which has the largest volume and the highest rates of speed. The report states that a uh, concept A comes at the expense of parking spaces along McNew Avenue. However, the consultant did not survey parking availability on the side streets. It says that in the report. This is where the vehicles who park on McNeil Avenue are going to have to park and having spoke to some of the residents on the side streets, they do not want these cars in front of their homes. My neighbor is in his 80s, has health and mobility issues and parks his car in front of his house. His wife has mobility issues and parks her car in the driveway. So he is gonna have to drive around side streets, hoping to find a space and then walk back to his house. I don't think that's reasonable. Concept A removes 100% of parking, B removes 70%. So people who have barbecues, visitors, family functions, trades, landscapers, some of my other elderly neighbors have landscapers who come with trailers, ladders, tools, like where are they gonna park? There's uh, nowhere to go. Plus the uh, parking study was carried out during COVID, so people probably didn't have a lot of visitors. So council are also close to approving secondary suites, I understand, and the number one issue suites create is parking. So removing all the parking on McNeil is short-sighted and is going to create a new problem. Given the fact that no research was done as to where people in the west portion of McNeil are going to park, I don't see how this can be refuted at this stage. The report says parallel parking along a roadway can be considered a traffic common measure, and this is due to a increase in lane width when parked. So I don't understand why removing them is going to make it any better. Um, anyway. It states that the, the benefit may not be fully realized as there is not enough street parking to take advantage of this technique, the parallel parking, but secondary suites will add the additional parking. And so I don't understand once again how removing the parking makes this better. And the section of McNeil Avenue of the highest level of parking, which is medium, 50 to 80%, is a section that engineering are suggesting you eliminate all parking from. It says, it says there's a lot lower, uh, the report states that the, the least, the lowest parking demand is between Victoria Avenue and Transit, which creates a very wide stretch for vehicle travel resulting in high speeds, yet this is exactly what removing parking on McNeil will create. And funnily enough, I had, I had a trailer of compost outside my house the day I received this letter for my, my garden beds, and I just thought, so what does this mean? I'm not going to be able to do this anymore because I don't know where, I would, where else I would park it. And I would ask council members to put themselves in our position and imagine all the parking in front of being removed from outside where you live. So in conclusion, my recommendations are do not remove the parking in the west portion of Oakenhill Avenue. Residents need the parkland, especially when suites are approved and it acts as a traffic calming measure. Approve the same traffic calming measures you have planned for the east section of McNeil, which is traffic calming curbs, curb extensions, and maybe a raised crosswalk at the intersection of a uh, McNeil and Falkland, which would increase, increase pedestrian safety and slow traffic. And I realize we would lose some parking to, if you implemented these things, but not 100%. And of the, I only seen 24% uh, 24 respondents in the, in the, what I seen online, I, I understand there's more. And 62% of those people voted against concept A. And I ride my bike daily and reduced speed will increase uh, driver reaction time and definitely make cycling safer and more inviting and remove the yellow line and maybe put some uh, arrows in the roadway okay thank you very much for your comments sir yeah, nice. all right thank you and have a great evening um we have uh, any more members in the public in person here or no okay we're going to go online uh to those online i have two hands raised i have uh uh, again, I'll go to the phone number first, which was uh, ending in 8433. 
uh, you can hit star six to unmute, and or I can, yes, you can just hit star six to unmute. Uh, again, same process, you can state your name and municipality of residence, uh, and then you, you may address council. Welcome. Good evening, it's Corey Berger again. Apologies for the uh, snafu around policy and procedure. I speak to a lot of different councils, everyone has a little bit different one. Um, and uh, I'm the policy infrastructure chair for Capital Bike. And just to speak to you today a little bit about McNeil, we're excited to see uh, you know, some some action coming forward from Oak Bay in terms of making Oak Bay more bike friendly. And one of the interesting things is that Oak Bay regionally actually has the highest number of people who commute to work, um, even higher than the city of Victoria. So, you know, there's a lot of people who already ride in Oak Bay. We also know there's a lot of people in Oak Bay who would ride if it were made better. So that being said, I think one of the key things around this proposal and really any shared street proposal is that the details matter. It's the small things, the, you know, how big a curb is, where that curb is, et cetera, make, make a big difference. So overall, we're uh, not particularly supportive of the idea of curb bulges, uh, or, you know, the traffic calming, uh, the traffic calming curbs. They often create more conflicts than they actually solve by forcing people on bikes into the path of motor vehicles, especially in the busier western sections of McNeil or really any street that has up to 4,000 cars a day. That's pretty similar to what uh, Richardson had before the traffic calming was implemented, and there were a number of issues along Richardson. I used to happen to live on Richardson and, 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 and saw them every single day when some of those traffic calming curbs were. So what can you do instead? Uh, the report already talks about it, raised crosswalks. They're an amazing solution. Uh, you know, as one of the previous speakers mentioned, I, or uh, possibly it was Councillor Zelka mentioned, the raised crosswalk on Humboldt uh, is an amazing thing. It keeps someone who's walking or especially someone who's got a mobility device or you know, in a motorized wheelchair or in just a regular wheelchair, they have a completely flat crossing. Uh, I would note that within the city of Victoria on uh, Wilson, right near Old Esquimalt, there is one of these on a bus route. So one of the key concerns from BC Transit is going to be, can you put these on a bus route? Victoria has done it. Oak Bay can do it as well. Uh, as for speed limits, absolutely. Uh, keeping them lower than 40 is important. Uh, you know, if the city, if Oak Bay wants to remove those two school zones, Replacing them with a 30 kilometer an hour or a playground zone can also be done as well. Um, and that's something that you guys can look at. Regarding the larger regional uh, speed zone pilot, uh, that was canceled for just about everybody. Um, there were municipalities who wanted to do it at 40. Nanaimo was planning on do, doing that. Uh, there were some that were going to do some areas at 40 and some at 30. The, Victor uh, the city of Vancouver and Surrey have both done that. And I would note that this week, Thursday, the city of Victoria is talking about its speed uh, speed limit reduction. So I would urge councillors and members of the public to look at that. And then lastly, I just wanted to talk a little bit briefly about the, the bike lane concept, the westbound bike lane concept. One of the things I noted regarding that was that it is an unprotected bike lane, which does mean this road gets visually wider. So transitioning that from an unprotected to a protected bike lane uh, would keep the road narrower and reduce those speed issues. And where do you need, where do you get the width for that? Well, it's already been talked about tonight a little bit about tax standards. One of the things I noted is that you have 3.5 meter wide lanes, general purpose lanes. That is very wide for a street like McNeil. Uh, the city uh, the city of Victoria often goes down to three meter lanes. Uh, BC Transit asks for a minimum of 3.3, but does have short distances of lanes that are three meters wide that buses do transit on. So that is a possibility, again, knowing that there is those two bus routes that do use that western portion of McNeil. So I'd urge you to move quickly on some of these things. I'd also urge you to move in a way that, you know, if you need to go out and take a look at them again in six months or a year, uh, there's an opportunity to do that. So thanks very much, and hopefully uh, we'll get some action moving in Oak Bay. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Uh, next, we have within the uh, Zoom app, uh, Mr. Carter with his hand raised. Uh, welcome to the meeting. And we do have your correspondence here as well. You will have to unmute yourself uh, to, for us to hear you. Well, he's in the Zoom app. So, uh, Mr. Carter, if you're uh, listening, 
this is your chance to address council. Uh, you can unmute yourself. There okay, we go. Sorry. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the meeting, Mr. Carter. Wasn't working. Thank you very much, Mayor. And oh, uh, you're going to have to speak up, or you seem to have an issue with the audio. Okay, let's try that. Can you hear me now? No, we still we can hear very, very, very faintly in the background. So I think there might be some issue with the uh, with the pickup on the microphone. I don't know if that's Mr. Helped. Carter, you're not muted, but we cannot hear you. So there may be oh, an I, issue I, I with your speaking. audio and your device. I wasn't speaking. Um, I'm not sure if that helped. So, Mr. Carter, you sound like you're about standing about uh, a kilometer and a half at the other end of McNeil from the uh, from the microphone. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on technically at your end, but it's not audible at our end. Okay, one more try. I'm going to assume that you're probably able to hear me. There's a couple of things you might try. One might just be just to call the one eight five five number, and uh, use the uh, the meeting okay, ID I'm and passcode, and then hit star nine uh, to raise your hand so I know who it's you. And then I can uh, we can uh, okay, yeah. hit star can six to unmute. That might be the simplest way if we can't resolve the can through the app. Can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me now? Issue. Can you hear me now? Hello. We can very, very, very vaguely hear a noise in the background, but we can't hear what you're saying or, or anything. I'm assuming that noise in the background is you, but I really can't hear it. So, Mr. Carter, if you can hear me, can I encourage you either to log into the app again, like log out and log in, or try a different device, or more quickly, it may be easiest to phone. Just use the one eight five five number that's in the agenda package. I have I have it here, but I don't. Um... So, Mr. Carter, I'm assuming you can hear me. I can. So, why don't you try calling in? And we'll have a we'll go back to the council table, and I'll just keep an eye out for that hand popping up on our app, and uh, okay, and we'll yeah, come back I'm to you trying. when you do. I won't. I will make sure we give you the opportunity to address council. Thank and you. I do want you to know that we do have your very fulsome letter in front of us as well in the agenda package. Okay, Thank I can't you. hear you, so I'm going to go forward with that at the time being. Please do call, try calling into the the, uh, the phone number. Okay, back to this table. Are there any follow-up questions uh, for the council may have or committee members may have of staff? Oh, I'm, Mr. Carter's trying again here. Mr. Carter, can you how, how about would you like to try again? Am I being heard? Sorry, Mr. Carter, you are uh, inaudible at our end. Okay. So if you could please just go to the agenda package and, and call the 1855 number. That may I be the only that. way we resolve it. It may just, just be a, an issue with the microphone or some other some other yeah, hardware I, issue. I've never had an issue before, so. All right. Uh, I'm going to go for any other questions. I'm going to go to motions if that's, if that's desired. Go ahead, Councillor Brisbane. I, I just have a quick question. I wasn't quite sure what the right hook was, and I just was wondering if there is a specific solution that we use um, through you, Mayor, to staff um, to um, fix the right hook. Sure. It's a, more of a detailed design piece. That Mr. Rennick, do you want to give a quick overview? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. The right hook collision is when a cyclist is traveling straight through an intersection and a car is turning right and the car doesn't do a right side shoulder check and uh, it causes a conflict. I was cognizant of that comment that was raised by the member of the public uh, and we could certainly look at options in detailed design. Again, that intersection is in City of Victoria, but I've would be amazed if they would not be willing to work with us on such a critical piece of uh, safety. Thank you. Um, just before we get to motions, I just want to give the members, last member of the public, a chance to speak, just because I think that's just uh, courteous. So if there are any questions of staff for clarification, go ahead, Councillor Patterson. Yes, thank you. Um, just a, a follow-up. Uh, let me see. On page five, I guess, of the report, it, 
it uh, says, of course, that one of the concepts comes at the expense of parking um, spaces on on the street. And uh, although that the consultant didn't survey parking availability on the side streets around there, the assumption was made that because our parking facility our existing parking facilities bylaw um, in its current form assumes that most residents should be able to accommodate their vehicle parking needs on their private property. So is, is that what the engineering department would be anticipating or I won't say recommending but anticipating would be a solution to reduce parking on the street? Mr. Horan? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Through you, um, uh, the the question when we want to look at a potential change to design to try to achieve some aims in terms of do we want to try to reduce speeds? Are we trying to um, calm traffic? Are we trying to add bike lanes? Whatever the infrastructure questions about transportation and safety, um, we are bound at th at the moment by the by the constraints the limitations in the bylaw access but what we also talk about is costs and it's not just costs in terms of dollars for capital change it's costs in terms of parking it's costs in terms of change in use uh, and there are um, council or uh, community members on multiple sides of the discussion that will feel that the costs are more important for one thing or the other so in our reports we're not leaning towards one way or the other in terms of saying um, this is how to this is the cost we're just trying to provide the facts and, and, and the options that are available and make the recommendations as best we can based on um, the direction we've already been given in terms of things like the OCP and and, uh, and direction given from the council table in in, in in this chamber thank you yeah so uh, um I suppose then, if that was um, a consideration in this, in the overall concept of what is proposed here, um, because the analysis has been a little bit different in the secondary suites and the housing infill strategy, um, with potential to to change the parking facilities bylaw, this is something that uh, we would have to um, consider it within the framework of uh, both reports and the context of what was to uh, what was best for the community then thank you thank you councillor patterson um before i go to uh councillor zelka can i just i just noticing the time here we are creeping up on our, our three hour time limit um can i have a motion to extend this to 9 30 and moved and seconded any discussion on that all those in favor any opposed unopposed go ahead councillor zelka <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Chair. And uh, yes, I guess I'll, I'll try to expedite uh, my comments. And, and um, uh, I'm very uh, I'm impressed with the comments we received from the public and the correspondence. Uh, there's been there's a lot of a lot of uh, on, on ground intelligence um, that's uh, and, and was some wonderful suggestions. I also used to uh, live on McNeil for for ten years. Uh, further along closer to Monterey, so I'm quite familiar with some of the traffic patterns through there. Um, yeah, uh, I, I do see that there are some recommendations from staff, but I, I really have a hard time supporting some of them. But before I get into that, what I wanted to ask about, instead of some of the suggestions around around curbs, uh, street curbs, um, I do note it in some of the uh, cool kit um, workshops, um, instead of filling up a space with concrete uh, with a 90 degree curb that is uh, great for you know slowing traffic down I guess at that at a fundamental level um, some of the suggestions that came up from the cool cool kit uh, um, workshops was to put in this thing referred to as and I hope I get the, get it correct it was in Ron Carter's letter uh, planting tree bulbs uh, Mitchell Street has some of them and many other uh, lovely neighborhoods have these um, 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 built out areas that have trees on them and they're absolutely gorgeous um, and I would much uh, if we are going to uh, narrow the street artificially in certain areas just to slow traffic down I would love to see us finding ways to increase our our, our green space um, and ideally our canopy at the same time as opposed to it just being um, 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 concrete is this something that uh, that could be considered staff is our I'll give it to Mr. Rennick uh, yes thank you mayor uh, absolutely, if uh, that is direction that council would like to provide, that is something that can be factored into a revised design. 
Okay, you have more questions? Thank you very much. Uh, do I get the impression from staff that you're asking for a finalized design at this meeting, or are we being asked to uh, go forth to get closer to a finalized design that we then approve later? I'm not quite sure what it, we're kind of being asked for in this meeting, please. Sure. I'm going to be able to answer that, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, it's a committee of the whole, so we don't make decisions here tonight. Uh, so we're going to be making recommendations, either... We can ask for more information from staff. We can make a, a firm recommendation, or we can make a recommendation with some additional information required if we're giving some direction. So I would suggest that uh, really almost any direction is possible from this meeting. That's really up to this body. But is there anything else, Mr. Renick, you'd like to add to that, or Mr. Horan? Go ahead, Mr. Horan. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I think the key, one of the key takeaways from tonight is, is there is options on the table about what can be done uh, along McNeil. And the options are constrained by the by the limitations that we talked about. So things about the the, the current speed limits, the designation of the road and the OCP, and, and those things. And, and Mr. Rennick's report does talk about if the council um, wants to see different things happen along that stretch. That certainly that direction, we're happy to take that direction and and then react to it. So go off and do uh, the additional work to see what could what could be done to meet that direction. Um, but I think it's also uh, another key takeaway for tonight's report is just to kind of highlight the um, the level of effort around um, transportation style projects as opposed to the rest of our capital program. So there's very little uh, interaction um, that's required community wide uh, when we're talking about water main upgrades, sewer upgrades, storm, uh, the rest of it, or even our, our straightforward um, transportation issues such as we're going to add curb drops or uh, fix a sidewalk somewhere. So um, the uh, there's been some feedback tonight about uh, about the process and uh, and and the feedback's well taken. Uh, but I think the the takeaway is that uh, we really have done uh, the best that we can within the limits to meet the timelines. So it, the the options are like any project. There's a cost part of the triangle, a scope part of the triangle and the schedule. So we could have done more consultation or taken longer, but it, but it would take longer to do the, the work. So we come to the table tonight with the options that are available based on the constraints. Uh, and then uh, if that's, um, if a different direction is required, including more study, different design options, different uh, uh, wanted outcomes from the council, then we can take that direction, absolutely. Council That's very helpful, and I, I really appreciate uh, the staff just trying to be nimble. The previous councils have done that have got us here, and, and that's how we're going to move forward in, in, in bit by bit. Um, I, I'm intrigued with some of the suggestions around around uh, that were mentioned by by, um, by the members of the public. Concept one with the raised um, uh, crosswalks. There were suggestions of possibly putting it at Fowl, at, at Falkland and McNeil as a, as a way of possibly using the design of a raised uh, crosswalk at that in that area uh, that would automatically slow uh, traffic down without having to build anything out and do any other pouring of concrete um, uh, plus uh, the raised uh, sidewalks uh, or crosswalks further on uh, further on down down McNeil I, I think those uh, those those suggestions are excellent and if there's a way that we could ask uh, city of Victoria nicely uh, to put in uh, like a raised uh, uh, crosswalk right at Fowl Bay across McNeil that would uh, uh, avoid a, a right hook in that corner, going from a speeding 30 kilometers an hour heading north onto the 40 kilometer an hour heading, uh, going uphill. Um, uh, hopefully a, a raised uh, a crosswalk at that intersection also would, would automatically slow people down with respect to the design. So the last point I, I, I heard loud and clear was the design is what's really gonna help us here. And so creating wide expanses, uh, um, uh, obviously speeds, well, it has, it, it makes it very obvious. And anyone going up Cadbury Bay north of, um, of the built-up area by, by, the, by the, uh, uh, the golf courses where the road opens up, uh, speed limit stays at 50, but everyone goes way faster than 50 just because the road is, is telling you to go fast. So we don't want the roads telling uh, anyone to go fast in this area. Um, last thing I would say is um, uh, Victoria Street from Granite down to, I think it's Central? No, Granite to, uh, to Windsor um, is a 50 kilometer hour um, local road. Um, so I believe it's 40, if I remember correctly, on, on Granite and, 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 and 40 further along, but, but Victoria itself is 50. Uh, that has parking uh, at, at, at late at night, uh, um, uh, this packed parking on both sides, so that road becomes a single lane. And the design of that road 
uh, anyone would be a fool to go 50 down that road. Um, uh, so automatically I see everyone slowing down because of the design of the road. They have to slow down to 30 uh, for, for, for safety reasons. So I'm hoping uh, uh, it might seem um, 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 uh, like, a, like a, a somersault of thought, but by putting more parking on McNeil, we would actually slow people down or putting in some, some, some creative barriers with, uh, with these tree planting and tree bulbs, and of course, raised uh, crosswalks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zilka. I have Councillor Braithwaite and then Green. And I don't have... Um... I think you had Councillor Appleton. Oh, uh, yes. I, just, I think he wanted to make a motion, but he wanted to speak in generally. Yes. I'm going to come back to you for a motion. I just, I'm giving a couple more minutes for... Uh, <laughs> Or Mr. Carter to come back in, uh, but we do have to move this meeting forward. So, and we do have a, like, an enormously long letter from Mr. Carter as well to yeah, he's covered. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Mayor. I'm um, actually it was just through through you to staff, and and Mr. Horan kind of touched on what I was going to talk about, which was uh, honestly like great report from staff. Thank you both Thanks. for that. Um, and I and I understand the frustration that the public feels. I mean, we sometimes feel that frustration sitting around this table as well when we get um, reports on on you know a, a bigger report on, on shorter notice but um, I, I just want to say that it is a great report um, if there's a way in the future that we can look at perhaps engaging prior to uh, you know giving giving the public more time um, that would be wonderful but um, I think that you've already touched on on looking at the process but again I, I just want to say kudos to you for all the work and time and energy that went into it Thank you. And I will say, if, if that's the will of the council, then one of the options we have at this table is to say, OK, we've got the report now. Do we want to send this out for broader public consultation? That is certainly in our purview. And I don't want to put all the weight of that on the mm -hmm. on the staffs, which they're, sometimes they may put something out that the council wouldn't support, in which case they're also in that. In that. Go ahead, Councillor Green, and I'll go to Councillor Appleton. Yes, thank you very much. And first, thank you, yes, for a very complete and comprehensive report. Um, and thanks to all the public who wrote in, tried to zoom in, and um, and came in person to talk to this issue. Oh, okay. We have counsel, I think we have Mr. Carter back online, but I'll just you can finish your comments. Okay. First. Well, very quickly, having lived in the area for 11 years, th there are some some big issues on McNeil or have been for some time. The intersection, um, and it, I appreciate knowing that it's a Victoria City of Victoria intersection. It has two of the worst scenarios going for cyclists and for um, people who ride motorcycles, and that is you, you have to do a right hook. You have no choice on one side. You can't go straight through now, so you have to go right or you have to make a left turn. And left turns are the most dangerous thing for both cyclists and for motorcyclists, and I've learned this through motorcycle training as well. So that intersection, I, I really encourage our department to reach out to the city of Victoria to consult on how that, that intersection can be improved because at the moment it has two very dangerous um, s scenarios for people uh, on two-wheel vehicles in particular. Um, generally speaking, um, I look at this as sort of an integrated approach um, that we look at speed reduction. Um, I think expanded consultation would be helpful. Um, that we also monitor the post-Richardson impact of traffic on, on McNeil and that closure and how, how we measure the impact there. Um, I think also um, that there is an impact for side streets and cut throughs and Roslyn is one of those. In fact, uh, the streets that are mostly affected I think are Falkland, Victoria and Roslyn. Um, and it, it has become really quite unbearable. Um, these are short streets and uh, they are used a lot by pedestrians and cyclists. But what's happened is that traffic now is, is cutting through um, because of the Richardson closure is, is one factor and the other factor is the increase, just the, the, the simple increase in traffic. There is a lot of speeding on McNeil as well and um, we, I, I, I appreciated all of the council members' comments but I was particularly interested in the innovation around using other kinds of traf uh, traffic calming things like planters, for instance. I don't know how many of you have been down Brighton on the other side of Fal Bay, but Little Brighton between Fal Bay, and I say Little Brighton because it is, uh, between Fal Bay and Richmond, the city of Victoria and the neighborhood partnered there and put in planters. They're made of wood, some have benches, 
but it has really calmed uh, the traffic issues they were having earlier, apparently. So there, there are some innovative approaches as well. And using, you know, utilizing green materials as opposed to, uh, so that was, you know, an interesting approach. Um, I, I really appreciated the comments from one of our, our speakers, and that was about mobility challenged individuals and also maintaining school zones. I, I, I personally, because I live in the neighborhood in the area, think that reducing the speed limit to 30 for the stretch between Foul Bay and Transit would be, uh, you know, would have a, a, a positive impact. But McNeil definitely is a runway of sorts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe, Mr. Carter, we have you back. Yes, or whoever's. Uh... I hope so. <laughs> okay, I, we did hear you there. You're going to have to speak up a little bit. Even that comment was quite quiet. So if you could just uh, state your name okay. and municipality of residence for the record. We do have the full letter that you've written to us in our possession, so uh, we don't yep. need to, to recash all of that, but uh, feel free to uh, address council on points that you want to uh, highlight, if you would uh, please, Mr. Carter. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, and through you uh, to the committee. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to um, address um, the situation here and a little, a few points made in my letter. Uh, Mr. Carter, can I just no ask that you speak up a little bit? It's quite quiet uh, at our end. Okay, um, I'm talking directly into my my microphone. Am I being heard? Okay. You're you're clear now. Thank you. Just if you can keep that up. Okay, I will. Sorry. So, Mr. Mayor, through you uh, to the committee, I uh, only want to touch on a few of the uh, items in my letter, my lengthy letter and my pictures. But um, just to, I'm, I live on Falkland Road. I'm two houses in from McNeil on the south side and so was uh, a recipient of the original um, abbreviated letter from the, uh, from the engineering department. Um, my first uh, comment is that I do believe the process uh, has not um, done justice to this um, uh, to, to the neighborhood issues in that the letter did not get very far circulated beyond McNeil itself and uh, we, we do have a bit of a neighborhood network that uh, we check in with to see who gets um, some of this correspondence and it only went a couple of houses down on, on either side of the uh, the side streets. Now Falkland Road in particular uh, has its own uh, traffic issues um, primarily because uh, it is uh, the first straight stretch uh, into South Oak Bay uh, that reaches uh, Central and, 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 and as shown by the statistics of where the cars uh, thin out um, uh, from Foul Bay to Victoria on the um, to the west of Victoria it, it it's evident that the uh, where do those cars go? Well, they they most of them do not go all the way down McNeil. They they are are turning left or right or uh, to get to other places in in South Oak Bay or or up to the uh, central part of the the uh, center. Nevertheless, um, so it's really uh, I think a very inaccurate um, survey that that was taken. Uh, first of all, to conclude that. That concept A is um, is the preferred choice um, to me seems really uh, ludicrous to the actual um, uh, uh, response from the neighborhood and the fact that this end of uh, west of Victoria received a different uh, plan and a, re and a very limited uh, of the limited to the two concepts that were um, not and we were not. Uh, shown what was happening east of Victoria uh, with some of the innovative ideas that we could really use west of Victoria uh, Avenue on McNeil to traffic calm. I mentioned uh, planting bulbs. Um, you've, the, the engineers used the uh, extension term, but nevertheless, um, we do need to uh, create some type of narrowing and some uh, through planning uh, uh, psychological effect of uh, to slow cars down, um, sure raised raised um, crosswalks are are one approach. I don't believe in the speed bumps, 
uh, I think they can uh, perhaps even cause some uh, some grief uh, with um, and some conflicts between uh, between motorists. I use the con- um, the idea of the Humboldt, and I know uh, at first glance it looks like it's a um, a game of chicken, as Councillor Green suggested. But in fact, if you study that carefully, it has so many positives about it that I think would be very very um, uh, apropos for um, Oak Bay in many situations, even McNeil. And as as far as uh, uh, as far as the the costs go, we're just talking. Um, keeping cars parked on McNeil, um, providing uh, dashed lines for cyclists so that when cyclists are in their lanes, cars know exactly how far out to stay. And yes, if, if two cars are coming head on, one has to yield to, to the car by staying in this lane. And, um, and it has to be the car that uh, is approaching a cyclist. If there are no cyclists, Cars can easily pass. Uh, there is the um, the buffer area that allows cyclists to to remain outside of the um, outside of um, the, the the area where doors would open. Mm-hmm. So, in general, it is a much safer approach to to cycling. And I I do have a uh, a pretty experienced cycling history, and um, I I somewhat disagree with uh, the fact that cycling lanes, I, I believe they are uh, effective in keeping cars and cyclists um, uh, at an appropriate distance apart. So um, I'm, I'm being a little psych- cycle-centric here, but we really are trying to, uh, McNeil, ever since the Rich- Richardson Street went in, uh, and, and all your statistics are, are prior to that happening, so we do not have that volume of, of traffic on McNeil. We still have the the traffic velocities, and that's really what's always been the concern. It's not the number of cars, it's the speed. And we need to employ some really creative uh, ways of slowing up the traffic and making it more cycle-friendly. And at the same time, when you have um, cycle lanes, or at least uh, even temporary cycle lanes, like the dashed lanes on Humboldt, you, you then are, are separating uh, cars with or without parked cars there uh, from from people walking. And um, I know this shows cyclists, uh, young cyclists, I guess, on the sidewalk, which I, I don't think is very legal, but um, that's, that's shown in the concepts as well. Um, but nevertheless, we are trying to keep young cyclists safe, and there are a lot of them because of the two schools. And so... Um, combination of reducing the speeds and um, and I, I would recommend 30 right through. Uh, McNeil can't, I don't know how it can be called a collector when Foul Bay is dead-ended. Um, it goes to a dead end pretty well at, at intersection at Newport and there's really no collector to um, uh, higher velocity um, you know, arterial roads. Uh, that's, I think, a ridiculous uh uh, concept that that McNeil has that status. I'll stop there. Thank you, Mr. Carter. I will note that we also have uh, Mr. Stewart, who had registered to speak, uh, is with us online. Mr. Stewart, if you could uh, please uh, unmute your thing, introduce your name, municipality of residence, and address your comments to council. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? Can, thank you. Very good, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the committee. Uh, I am a resident of Oak Bay, um, and I have been a 30-year resident of McNeil Avenue. And before that, I lived for many years on Richardson Street, where I grew up. So my perspective is is sort of a tale of of two cities, um, seeing what has happened in Victoria with Richardson Street, and hoping that the District of Oak Bay can find its own solution to um, accommodate the needs of the cyclists, the drivers, the residents, and the pedestrians here. I did prepare a a rather lengthy letter uh, dated June the 10th, but it was prepared without the benefit of having read the Watt Consultants Report, um, uh, and I I apologize for that. Um, We do a lot of walking in the neighborhood, uh, uh, and mainly up to Oak Bay Avenue and beyond, or recreational walks down to the beach, 
And uh, we um, appreciate council taking the time to consider McNeil Avenue and the challenges that people are facing as users and residents of the street. And there's a, a lot of you know, very good work that's been done here by staff and some thoughtful comments coming from members of the public and from council members themselves, uh, which are much appreciated. Um, I'm not going to belabor many of the points that you've already heard from many other members of the public. I would just express, because I live closer to Victoria Avenue myself, I would express um, some concern at the idea of, of reducing, um, you know, uh, of increasing the, uh, the travel along the uh, McNeil Avenue by the school crossings from 30 to 40. I, I do uh, want to see that preserved. I there was an occasion when I was walking from my home to the bus stop on Victoria Avenue. I, I saw two students uh, who attended um, St. Michael's University School run across the crosswalk in front of a car traveling along McNeil Avenue. Uh, very fortunate that the car wasn't traveling at a speed that prevented it from reacting to that situation. But it does highlight the risk that these uh, young people face on McNeil as they try and make their way to school. Um, and uh, at, at a crosswalk that is not, uh, you know, given the protection of a stop sign or or a control signal. Um, on other um, matters, I would uh, support the idea of looking at additional traffic calming for the western portion of Neal Avenue. I, I, I uh, note that there is no crosswalk uh, on McNeil Avenue from Foul Bay Road until you get to Victoria Street on the east side of Victoria. That's the first crosswalk. The same distance on Oak Bay Avenue has five crosswalks and on Cadbury Bay Road the same distance has six crosswalks and on each of Cadbury Bay and uh, Oak Bay of course there's one of those crosswalks is actually controlled. So I do think that for the purpose of supporting active transportation in a north-south direction between South Oak Bay and Oak Bay Avenue, the possibility of looking at an additional crosswalk in the area west of Victoria yeah. might be something to consider. Um, and uh, you know, just to just to uh, conclude, the my letter of June tenth initially did not support uh, either option A or option B. I have subsequently sent emails into the municipality indicating that if it was felt necessary to pick one of those options to proceed with at this point in time that I would support option B as at least offering some of the traffic calming that many of the residents desire for McNeil Avenue. Um, but I, I do hope that this can be undertaken in the context of more examination of some of the traffic calming uh, opportunities that might exist to address the issues that that uh, have been raised this evening and that you you know you, you all seem to be now uh, quite aware of many of you as residents in the area. So I uh, thank you very much for your consideration of these uh, of these matters. Thank you very much, Mr. Stewart. Uh, I think that does conclude our registered speakers and the people in person. So we're going to come back to this table. I think we've addressed all of the questions from council. Uh, it is 921. I think realistically, we just need a bit of time to have a discussion up to council whether or not they want to extend beyond 930. But uh, if that's the will, we make a motion to extend it beyond 930. Extend. I'll make a motion to extend till 10. Is there a second there? Is moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? If it's not unanimous, it fails. And, uh, so just for that record, uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed. That carries. So we are extending to 10. I would ask that we do not extend beyond 10, uh, just as a, as a courtesy to staff. And we could still end by 9.30, that's true. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Oh, thank you, Worship. So firstly, I would move that uh, that the staff report infrastructure project delivery capability... Oh, sorry, no, that's the wrong one. That uh, McNeil Avenue traffic calming report be received. Second. Second, any discussion on the receipt? All those in favour? Any opposed? Unopposed. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So I will make a motion just to provide some direction, and I will ask Council's indulgence because I'm going to provide a little bit of detail here so, so, so as to give the best direction to staff. So you, at, at your discretion, Your Worship can choose to, to sever these if you, if you so choose. But the first part of the motion would be as described in, in the Council report, which is that the committee rep recommend to Council that a detailed design of traffic calming improvements on McNeil Avenue be completed to be constructed as part of the 2020 capital program and that the detailed design be based on concept B between Fowl Bay and Victoria and concept one between Fowl Bay and transit and yes concept one between Fowl Bay and transit be to, for the entire stretch of the evaluation area, yes, that's right, Your Worship. Between Fowl Bay and Victoria. Okay. So just to re reiterate, and that the detailed design be based on concept B between Fowl Bay and Victoria, and concept one between Fowl Bay and transit. Can I continue? Oh, sorry, I don't, is you, are you completed I'm, on that? No, that's, that's part of it, Your Worship. I've got a couple of other sections to this. So, um, Why don't we do it and I can always separate them uh, if, if we want to have that set of that, those pieces. So. Okay. Um, and that the detailed design consider the removal of the center line between Fowl Bay and Victoria as per the Watt report. Sorry, center line between where? between Fowl Bay and Victoria, as per the Watt report. It's a separate piece. Just, it's just asking for consideration of that as part of the de detailed design. Mm -hmm. not, it's, I, the way you see uh, consider, I'm assuming that's not dictatorial, let's just asking that that be The considered detailed part design of that. consider the removal. Okay. Yes, Your Thank Worship. you. And there's another and? And, <laughs> this is the final and, Your Worship. Okay. And, that staff reach out to the city of Victoria to explore further safety improvements for the Fowl Bay and McNeil intersection. I'll second that. So I'm just going to make sure I read this back in a way that I heard what you said and, and that other people have it as well. So I have uh, move forward asking staff to come back with a detailed design for consideration of a 2023 capital project that that design be based on concept b uh to the for the western section so basically from uh, Fowl Bay to victoria but that the traffic calming pieces are under concept one all the way from facebook uh, Fowl Bay, so from Fowl bay to trans music like abbreviation of fb Fowl bay to transit uh, and detailed design consider removal of the center line uh, between Fowl bay and victoria and that staff uh, connect with the city of Victoria uh, concerning that intersection at Fowl Bay and uh, Sir McNeil and Fowl Bay. Correct? That's correct, Your Worship. Okay. Does everybody have that down and clear? Okay. Um, moved and seconded. So go ahead, Councillor Appleton. You still have the floor if you wish to motivate. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I won't belabor it. Um, the first part of, of my uh, motion pertains to recommends concept B. Um, I've, I've had extensive conversations with residents in the area and they've made their opinion fairly clear here tonight that um, they do have concerns about concept A opening up the street, creating more space and actually creating more speed for cars. So. They, I have heard really clearly from the community that Concept B uh, provides traffic calming improvements but retains some of the parking that the community wants to, wants to see retained. Um, with respect to Concept 1, um, I, I favor the raised crosswalk idea. I favor an, an actual physical intervention to reduce speeds. And I do think that the proposed design in, laid out in Concept 1 may actually be applicable throughout the entire corridor and not necessarily limited to uh, Victoria eastbound. Uh, and recognizing that Victoria westbound to Fowl Bay does include uh, buses, as has been noted, this type of intervention is not in and of itself incompatible with a transit route. So I think that that, that, is, that is suitable for the entire corridor. Um, 
The second part relating to the removal of the center line, again, it is re uh, recommended in the Watt report, and, and I do hear also from the community that, again, just their observations of the movements of vehicles through that section with the center line uh, provides, uh, a, 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 in, I guess, <laughs> colloquially incorrect guidance for motorists, and it is coming the, bringing them into conflict with the, with the parked vehicles on the side. And so I, I would like to see the entire, I think it makes sense to me for the entire McNeil corridor to be absent of a center line, such that speeds can be harmonized and that the, the design is in confound on Richmond, and, or excuse me, Richardson on the Victoria side. Uh, and then finally, of course, uh, the f final part of the motion reacts to, responds to uh, staff's identification that the entirety of the intersection is in fact in the city of Victoria. Uh, and I think that we would very much like to work with the city of Victoria to harmonize our design for McNeil with uh, Richardson and through their jurisdiction. So I would like to see uh, what options staff could develop in concert with their counterparts in Victoria for further improvements in that intersection. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, thank you so much. And, and I seconded that because I, I, I agree with, um, with obviously what's being put forward. The only, the only concern that I have is um, when I look at concept one is with the traffic calming curbs. And I don't actually like those traffic calming curbs. I would actually prefer to see more of the raised crosswalks um, a, 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 along the street at certain intersections. And I think it was brought up by one of the speakers that um, there's not enough crosswalks in in certain areas of McNeil um, as a, as compared to Oak Bay Avenue, Cabaret Bay Road, etc. And I would tend to agree with that. And I had actually written down um, adding a crosswalk at Hampshire Transit, Falkland, Victoria, perhaps. You know, and especially if we go with something like a speed, um, a raised crosswalk rather than the cap traffic calming curbs. I don't actually like those traffic calming curbs. I think they're they're not aesthetically pleasing um, as far as looking at them. If we were going to go with something like that, I think something um, Councillor Green said around um, more of a planting or, or, or something like that would be preferable. But um, the, to me, the traffic calming curbs basically make the, the, the road even narrower. Um, so if you did have two cars going by each other, it would be hard for a bike to be in that position as well. So I'm not sure, Councillor Appleton, if you had considered those co traffic common curbs or not. Uh, is the question is put to you, Councillor Appleton, you're welcome to answer it. Uh, and I thank you, Your Worship, and I, and I appreciate the commentary. I guess I would, and I think it's a reasonable statement, and we have heard um, from members of the public that the traffic calming curbs are not necessarily a, 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 an, an ideal intervention with respect to traffic, with, with respect to cyclist movements. I, I suppose, I think it's a valid comment. I guess I would then defer to staff uh, to, uh, I, because the concepts as laid out strictly here don't contemplate an extension of raised crosswalks and, and those through the entire corridor. So I, my expectation would be a detailed design that those types of things might be slightly revised based on an extension of traffic calming through the physical curbs or the physical bumps all the way through the corridor. But I, that I would defer to staff on that. Thank you. And I, if I may just put that as a question to staff on this one. Um, if the motion passes as is with those concepts, um, and based on the conversation here, I, I think we're always running this fine line if we don't want council designing road design. Um, at the same time, we want to make sure that we're reflecting you know, community will and so forth at this table in a way that, that brings a, a detailed design back that, that would meet the expectation. So um, I guess I just to staff, from your perspective, based on the conversation that we're having here, is do we need, do you, would you like some more detailed sort of guidance in terms of things like the, the traffic calming curbs over uh, you know, tree plantings over raised sidewalks in terms of preference, uh, or, or uh, what would you appreciate from our body to make this as clear as possible in terms of the will of council at this point? Mr. Horan? Uh, yes, thank you, Worship. This might be a two-part staff answer because I'll have something to start and, and Mr. Rennick uh, being 
uh, much more knowledgeable on, on the details. He, he might need to jump in at the end. Uh, just in listening to the discussion so far about uh, the the motion and the direction to be given to staff, I just wanted to, to um, add some feedback, which was around, uh, it's very difficult to try to put together a report and a discussion for council at the governance level that talks about things like design and what to do, especially when we hear overwhelming feedback from the community that's asking for a lot of different things. Um, but the, the I think the key takeaway is that uh, all of the things that are being asked for by the the community members who participated can't can't be done that because the, some of them are in conflict with each other so we do have to listen to them all and factor them in I think as a recommendation from the governance perspective is um, there, there was a, a key point in the report that we and the presentation we made which was if is to try to focus on the outcomes that we want to to achieve and then allow staff and then with our designing support designer support to come up with the solutions and so we can talk about potential solutions but those are you just ways to talk about the outcomes that we're trying to achieve so what i mean by that is if a resident is saying i'd like to see for example speed bumps or this kind of traffic calming in these areas or this kind of treatment here here and here it's not the crosswalk itself or the speed bump itself that is the important part from the government's perspective it's the what outcome do we want to see happen do we want to see the cars slow down or not and for now the proposals that are on the table from a design perspective were around achieving what the OCP says the road is supposed to be, and and as we briefed, that can be changed. But if we're going to discuss, um, you know, s solutions, detailed designs that are different, dr dramatically different from what we presented tonight, staff from our perspective would prefer to have also some direction around um, the type of street that McNeil is or should be, and and then that will help us uh, um, pr pr put together some options that might achieve the outcomes that uh, that you're looking for. And I don't know Mr. if Mr. Rennick has more to add to that. I'll defer to the chair to, to, to ask. I'm happy to let Mr. Rennick add to that. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, uh, that was a very, uh, it was a good response from Mr. Horan, and I'm not just saying that because he's my boss, but uh, the what we would be looking for in terms of governance is less about do this specific design in this specific location. We would be looking for outcomes in terms of we want to see something with raised crosswalks. Uh, I believe it was the, the motion that Councillor Appleton made. We want to see something that keeps on-street parking on each block, uh, was also part of the motion that was made by Councillor Appleton. In terms of the specifics of the design, I think that the motion that's currently being debated gives us enough guidance without making any technical decisions that it, it gives us enough flexibility to advance a detailed design that if there's a will from this body can can be brought back to this body and say here you go this is this is the direction that we were given at committee of the whole in june and this is what we've done with it and does this meet your intent thank you for that mr rennick um is that sufficient council with me Thank you, and thank you for that explanation. I think that the only other thing I'd like to say is that, um, you know, I, I did bring up the fact that the um, the Watt report was done prior to the um, the Foul Bay um, truncation, <laughs> as as it were, of of uh, of McNeil. Um, but I think that after listening to what everybody said tonight. Um, it isn't about the number of cars that's going, it's about the speed of the cars that are going. And I think that's where, um, I, that's why I, I supported this motion, because when I was listening to what Councillor Appleton was saying, I could see that, you know, by putting in um, the, uh, the raised um, crosswalks uh, and keeping the parking on, on opposite sides would actually help to do that and so that to me is is the reason that I was that I was supporting that because again I don't think it's the number of cars it's the speed of the cars thank you for that Councillor Zelka and Patterson uh, thank you so much uh, chair and thank you uh, for the comments um the 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 motion uh, I'm I'm very pleased with it it's it's something I can generally support I I do um I still have some concerns with um, the concept B from Foul Bay to Victoria in that it, it does still create a fairly wide expanse even though there's parking on one side. Uh, so I, I'm actually 
rather impressed with uh, and, and, and wish to support the, the general idea put forward by Councillor Braithwaite about possibly adding uh, or finding ways to consider the adding of more raised um, uh, uh, sidewalks which act as a speed bump, although I don't want to see speed bumps anywhere because they're, they're terrible, but a raised sidewalk is something that seems quite reasonable, especially with a, with, a, with, a, with a reasonable treatment, that would be a lovely physical design that would force cars and bikes to slow down on, on that downhill stretch for the pedestrians. Um, the fundamental concept that I'm looking for in, in this aspect, uh, in terms of the speed, is that the primary um, uh, ruler, uh, the, 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 the primary uh, um, uh, um, user of this road really needs to be the pedestrian. And that cars, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, bicycles and cars are, 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 are mechanized things. They can go much too fast. I've seen too many interactions between cars and bikes. I've seen even more terrible interactions between bikes and people. So if there's ways that we could find uh, to make it absolutely abundantly clear in the design that um, the pedestrian crossings is their domain and the cars and the bikes are guests on that crosswalk. That would be a fundamental concept that I would hope that this would help to capture and would go quite far at, um, at uh, seeing a good traffic calming approach uh, going forward. So um, I, um, I don't know whether that needs to be a motion to consider the addition of, of further crosswalks in the Fowl Bay to Victoria stretch. Um, uh, but it's certainly something I would like to see considered if, uh, if another councillor would be willing to support me. So I think the, the intention of the motion as it is, is that, it, that those, those pieces will come back from with recommendation as part of the detailed design. So I think, I think point made well that we're giving the, the, the broader intent here, then, then staff should, should be left to do the work of doing the detailed design work. But if you wish to make a motion to be very specific on that, you're, you're more than welcome to. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I would wish to make a motion, uh, an amendment to this, uh, to the motion put forward by Councillor Appleton, that uh, uh, in the detailed design staff consider the addition of, uh, of, of one further uh, raised sidewalk in the uh, Foul Bay to Victoria stretch. Motion to amend is seconded. Um, I think that's pretty clear in terms of the motion. Thank you. Shall I motivate? Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, and the reason for this is sort of similar to what I sort of mentioned. Uh, because it is a downhill stretch and because of the concept B uh, um, design which opens up the space just a little bit more than I'm comfortable with, uh, this raised sidewalk would go uh, uh, with the design of the road. The road is telling the cars and the bikes to slow down in the stretch and I'm imagining it would be in the Falklands area where this, um, this uh, uh, possibly running me, but in the Falklands area where this uh, uh, con uh, raised sidewalk would most likely go, but I would leave that to staff to determine. So before I go to additional comments on the on the motion, I just want to make sure that we're clear to, to staff. Uh, I mean, the word says consider, so it's yes. not it's not directive. Um, I just want to make sure that from staff's perspective is that does the motion that's put forward here adding that piece in there add any concerns to the piece or anything that you'd like to change in the wording, or would that be done automatically as part of the conversation results here, Mr. Horan? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I, I think um, what we'll end up doing is uh, is t trying to take in as much of the feedback that we heard tonight uh, within the concept within the confines of the the motion that was given to try to um, to see what uh, uh, what's reasonable, including additional crosswalks or any other pedestrian improvements. So so we can certainly look at that um, as the as we uh, further the design options going forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Well, thank you, Worship, and I, and I appreciate the granularity in the amendment. I just wanted to just bring to Council's attention that the, that the original motion, second part of the original motion to uh, apply concept one between Fowl Bay and Transit, to my mind, included that idea because concept one includes the raised crosswalks, and my intent was to have that, that type of design treatment applied for the entire stretch between Fowl Bay to Transit. So that was implicit in the in, in that part of that, but if that wasn't clear, then this just provides extra granularity. Just in the interest of managing a meeting here, I I think the motion is uh, 
I think it's probably covered already with the motions that have been made, but there's no harm in it if Chief Council wishes to add the additional clarity. So I'll leave it to Council to, to determine whether the motion is, 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 uh, is helpful or not. Uh, is there any other discussion on the motion? Go ahead, Councilor Green. The amendment, sorry. So the amendment is to add uh, wording to uh, consider additional crosswalk between uh, Victoria and Fowl Bay. So that's the motion. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. So the motion is now amended to include that additional consideration of additional crosswalk. Um, any, any other discussion on the motions in front of us? Oh, of course, I have a, sp a speaker's list here. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, I have uh, Councillor Patterson and then Councillor Green. Thank you. It seems almost um, redundant to be saying this now that we've had the conversation, but I, I, I appreciate the report that staff brought forward and the, and the good conversations that we had with members of the community. Um, I also um, am aware that the pedestrian sidewalk master plan came out, and num the number two issue on that was very much the same as on McNeil Avenue, and that was to... Um, to use methods to change the vehicle speeds and driver behavior, which has been accomplished with this, um, and the desire for higher quality and better condition crosswalks, which has also been achieved with this. So I, you know, I think we've addressed, uh, perhaps not as we will totally in the future with planting bulbs and whatnot, but I think we've addressed the main concerns of the residents on McNeil and the broader community, so I, I, I will be supporting the main motion. Councilor Patterson, Councilor Green. Yes, thank you. Before I give comments, I just wanted to ask a question through you to Mr. Horan or Mr. Rennick. Will the raised crosswalks have the lighted feature that the one um, that is in Obey, over by the University of Victoria on Gordon Head Road, will it have the same features? So that it's, it's, a, long, it's a long raise and there is a, an activated solar generated lighting feature as well, which is really great because it alerts drivers. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The rapid rectangular flashing beacon treatment, uh, which are the solar powered uh, light up beacons at the crosswalk, we tend to add one or two of those to crosswalks around the district per year, just under our existing active transportation funding. Uh, so that could be a candidate uh, as a location. We also have quite a few crosswalks that have an older style beacon that's just kind of a, a blinking halogen light that we're slowly trying to replace. So it, it's really just a question of, of how many of those can we do per year and do we prioritize replacing the old halogen bulbs or putting them in new locations. Um, so it's it, it's certainly a possibility. It's just not necessarily um, considered at this time for this location, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't be. Okay, thank you, hey, Councilor Green. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, I will be supporting the motion, but I, I and I won't go into the you know details about doing amending motions. I would like staff though to consider through through our comments the potential for lowering the speed limit on McNeil to 30 kilometers an hour between uh, Fowl Bay and Transit in particular. Um, I think that would also have a huge impact. I, I would hope they would consider a lighted, um, the, you know, the latest lighted version of a crosswalk um, lighting system. Uh, I drive, because I take Gordon Head Road to go and visit our family, they live in Saanich and uh, I use that road at least three times a week. And that that lighting system on that particular crosswalk is a huge feature to slowing traffic and alerting drivers who are not otherwise paying attention. Um, and yes, it's raised, but um, if you're going, if you're speeding, yeah, you'll, you'll hit it, but there, there may be somebody in the crosswalk by the time you're able to stop. So the lighting is, is a really great alerting system. So that, that, that would be my, you know, I, I'm hoping staff will consider that. And the other issue is um, it, it really helps to, I'm, I'm just wondering with whatever redesign is eventually completed, could that be shared with the neighborhood and with neighbors in the broad area? before uh, the council makes a final decision, just so that, that we can get 
it's hard to envision what something will look like until you actually see it. It's also one dimensional, so it's it's more difficult, but it would be really helpful if if neighbors could have access to to the final design and that would include side streets, so <laughs> neighbors on Roslyn, Falkland, Victoria, and so on, because those are the streets that are Im impacted by other issues in terms of traffic flow, cut-throughs, and, and sometimes overflow parking. So I think it would be really helpful to share it with those neighbors. And lastly, I really appreciate the comments from the public, and I agree that um, our parking bylaw is, is, is a constraint. I'm hoping that in the not too distant future that parking line bylaw will be revised um, and review, renewed to reflect the current environment because I, I and I, my last comment is that uh, in 2014 when McNeil was identified as a collector, and, and there's some, some disagreement over that fact, um, that was in fact quite a while ago. Our environment has changed. Uh, there, there is more traffic. Traffic patterns have changed. So I think it's important that we continue to remain as current as possible in whatever research we're doing and, and in whatever um, uh, analysis we're undertaking. But I really appreciate the Watt report that was included with this report. And I think engineering under all the circumstances um, has really you know, tackled McNeil and it has not been tackled previously. And that is much appreciated, I'm sure, by everyone that lives not only on McNeil but in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. Go ahead, Councillor Zelka. Thank you so much, Chair. I'll be quick with my last comments. Uh, when I lived on McNeil uh, and we were doing some, some tree work, the uh, um, arborist uh, from Oak Bay Parks came by and said that McNeil used to have Dutch elm trees all the way down, according to, to uh, if I, my memory serves correctly. They used to be quite a, a lovely tree-lined street, but they all died. So I would hope that if um, planters were going to be used or bulbs were going to be used or whatever may be used in place of possible co uh, concrete, maybe as a way of, of uh, saving money on this uh, on this uh, uh, um, project going forward, possibly that uh, that engineering would work with parks to see if maybe something could be added uh, with respect to trees and greenery. Thank you very so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so we have an amended motion in front of us. Uh, the amendment is passed, so that includes the uh, the original motion plus the uh, consideration of an additional crosswalk. Uh, I'll just show a very short comment in here. I am supportive of the idea of. Of looking at tree uh, canopy efforts, if that's they they naturally help, but they also provide a more pleasant cycling environment if it's shaded as well uh, by their own by the very nature of them. Um, and I'm going to just suggest uh, after this motion passes that we may have a, a quick motion arising that gives some direction in terms of how we would like this to come back. I think there might be some merit uh, to uh, 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 to direct. Uh, the detailed design to go out and have some public posting and comments so that we can we can collect that in a way that uh, that consolidates the feedback and so that when we come back here we don't have uh, you know hours of uh, public feedback required here to get the same feedback we can collect that you can come back as part of that uh, and even inform some changes before it comes back so those would be the sort of the the additional thing I might suggest be uh, as a motion arising but not part of this motion because uh, they are two separate items so um, I don't see other hands on this motion that's sitting here, so motion is uh, as made by Councillor Appleton and then amended. Um, I'll call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? And then opposed, so that will move forward. And if I, I'm not going to make the motion, but I'll suggest the motion to basically to uh, for staff to share a detailed design with the community for public feedback prior to its return to Council. So moved. Moved and seconded. Is that adequate, uh, Mr. Horan? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll provide um, uh, all the material that was on the agenda tonight. We'll make that available on the project page, and then as we progress further in the project, we'll uh, we'll be able to point people to all of the information that was received, and then uh, that will inform the next uh, discussion that comes back to the committee. Yeah, I appreciate that approach, and I think it's something a model that we've I, just for the public watching have tried to in, uh, take in on m multiple things because it allows us to, to to capture that consolidation and share the information more broadly. Um, so thank you for that. Um, all right, so that motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion on it? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. That concludes this item. Uh, we do have one more item on the agenda, which is uh, seven point. Uh, one, uh, oh, sorry, not 7.1, 7.2, uh, 
Um, uh, Mr. Horan, uh, we are going to try and get through this because I think the uh, the pieces here, if we need to uh, postpone it to another meeting, we can do so, or we can refer it to council as well for the next council meeting if we saw fit. But why don't you provide a quick overview of this? Uh, you've got a very detailed report that kind of lays things out, but I think there's probably a number of questions that might arise. So let's try and get through those tonight and see if we have a chance to move it forward. Go ahead, Mr. Horan. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, the original concept uh, was that I had a bit of a presentation to work through about five or six minutes. Okay. Um, I can still do that, or if if you if you prefer, I can do an overview. That would be uh, it. It might not anticipate all the questions that would come. Uh, it depends on on your feel as the chair. Uh, I would prefer that you prefer you provide the presentation, Mr. Horan. Okay. And worst case scenario, we can then refer this to the next council meeting for discussion, um, or if it's if council is straightforward, then we can make some a quick motion, but probably more likely to refer it to the next council meeting. Go ahead, Mr. Horan. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to uh, make an attempt to share my screen and then see if I can pull this off here. success it's up on the screen well I have, done I have something there oh we gosh. don't understand why mr. Horan is the boss <laughs> yeah <laughs> <That was. laughs> okay thank you your worship I'm gonna bash right in because uh, and, and miss as mr. Rennick uh, I, I won't say anything so uh, so thank you uh, for uh, the opportunity to talk a little bit about um, infrastructure project delivery um, last uh, last year we um, we delivered uh, council received a uh, sustainable infrastructure replacement plan, uh, which was a comprehensive long-term financial planning document um, that makes some recommendations about sustainable service delivery for infrastructure, uh, and, uh, and and really makes some details about how to set goals and how to fund infrastructure delivery for the next 100 years. Um, but the question at the time of how to practically increase uh, the amount of capital renewal work that we can do was not really discussed in depth, and that wasn't the purpose of that report. The, so the council's uh, reaction to that was to direct us to come back with this discussion, capabilities, capacities, and outcomes uh, related to, uh, to how to do this capital work going forward. Everything that we have that talks about um, the, the, the asset management, infrastructure renewal, why are we doing what we're doing is located here on the website, and, and that's, the, that's the page here. I think I might learn the lesson from Mr. Rennick and make that go away. There we go. Um, and uh, I'll go through this a little bit faster than I intended because most of you have seen this already, but I did want to start from the beginning because any discussion about asset management or where we're going in the future really should cover the ground, the significant ground that has been covered in the last few years. Um, back in 2015, the Council, through strategic priorities process, identified a number of projects that kind of fit under the umbrella of asset management planning or asset management program. Uh, which it, it triggered a number of activities that really are the foundational steps, fundamentally improvement uh, and fundamental projects that uh, help us uh, really get a grip on asset management, and, and they're all listed there. And, and I don't want to blast past them too quickly, but those are so critical that they happen between 2015 and 2018, because everything after that we've done were, were based on having those uh, completed. Uh, the real uh, turning point, key turning points are, in 2018, adoption of an asset management policy and asset management strategy by the council, and, and some, some key decisions about saving um, each year for future infrastructure needs. Um, these, uh, these two things really guided the actions and outcomes the staff is, uh, is responding to and added some program management discipline uh, to get real work done in infrastructure uh, and make real progress. Uh, and finally, uh, the last part here is I really am moving fast, but I can, I'm trying to, I usually want to talk slower, but we've got, we're limited here. Uh, so forgive me for going so quickly. But it's predictable infrastructure funding was also really critical um, to our ability to, uh, to plan for, uh, for good sustainable service delivery going forward. So in taking a moment to kind of celebrate successes, we have uh, a five-year financial planning process that's in place. We're trending towards 100-year sustainable funding targets. We have consistent, predictable funding in the five-year plan, which leads to an ability to ramp up the amount of capital program planning and the output of that capital program uh, over time. Another success worth pointing out, last September, sustainable infrastructure replacement plan, this was endorsed by Asset Management BC, just kind of summarizes the $900 million worth of assets that the district is responsible for, that provides the services that the district uh, um, has. 
and 274 million of those were identified as beyond ser useful service life or due for replacement. But Council has already reduced the 100-year infrastructure funding gap by 50% in making the change from annual funding in 2017 of 3.7 million to 8.2 million in 2021. So now we're left with a handful of challenges going forward. Um, you know, what do we do now? And the first one is, well, how do we address two plus decades of deferred maintenance and infrastructure rehabilitation? How do we replace 274 million of assets over the next 15 and 25 years? And how do we keep this program project delivery aligned with increasing budgets and your expectations and the community's expectations around responsible asset management? So the first part is the funding, which we're on track for the 100 year cycle. The second part is you've got to do capital project capacity and capability, so you've got to deliver on projects, which I have a little arrow there that says lagging, and really that's what we're going to talk about tonight for the rest of the night. There's a bit around operations and maintenance. Uh, apologies, I didn't define that in the slide. O&M is operations and maintenance, day-to-day -day maintenance, which is coming as part of a levels of service definition work that's going to happen in 2023. And those three things together is how you get sustainable service delivery for infrastructure. Mr. Van, I'm going to interrupt you here just because we really have a minute left in our allocated time. I'm going to turn to the body here. Um, I think actually, for one thing, your presentation is worthy of a broader audience than we have here tonight. Uh, and second of all, I don't want to rush you because I think this is important. So um, I'm just going to ask, I'll turn to this body, we either have a motion to uh, extend or we just have a motion to refer this to the follow. Are you here next week, Mr. Varan? Uh, I am, Your Worship. Okay, so. Uh, I'll make a motion to refer it to a future meeting. Second. Move to a future council meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to point out, I think it can be a council meeting. We've had an uh, opportunity for public input here. We could motion to refer then uh, is uh, on, the, on the table. All those in favor? Any opposed, none opposed? Uh, and uh, no new business on the record, so we just need a motion to adjourn. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed, none opposed? 